its ivy-covered walls, its golden dome, the University of Notre Dame, the home of the Fighting Irish. from all over the country to follow the Irish from the great Northwest, the Southwest, Midwest, and East. And today they come to watch a team that has won its last five to challenge an old foe, the Panthers of Pittsburgh. There is something special about a fall afternoon on a college campus. From the campus of the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana, it's the Pitt Panthers against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Sponsored by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. And by Apple Computers. This is the stadium Newt Rockney built, Notre Dame Stadium, the 53rd straight sellout for the 47th meeting between 18th-ranked Notre Dame and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh hasn't beaten Notre Dame since the opening game of the 1976 season when they won their national championship. Looking at the records, Pittsburgh has won four in a row with losses coming to bowl-bound teams, Maryland and West Virginia. Notre Dame, on the other hand, they've won five in a row. However, they're looking to prove themselves today as their wins have come against teams with losing records. And now the Panthers of Pittsburgh. site to be playing a game today with major bowl implications. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Bender along with Pat Hayden. And Pat, Pittsburgh is excited about a chance to beat the Fighting Irish here in Notre Dame Stadium. Well Gary, you're right. This is a very special place to play football. And whether you play for Notre Dame or against them, you always have some magical moments here. And for these Pitt seniors who have never beaten Notre Dame, a win today will provide a lifetime of great moments. Pat, on the other hand, Notre Dame looks at this as a pivotal game. They think they could launch their football program with a win and take some pressure off of Jerry Faust. Well, when you're an independent, a major bowl bid is always your goal. Now, while October games are important, November games determine who will play on January 2nd. Both these teams are independents. Both are 6-2. and two, But Jerry Faust needs a win over a team like Pittsburgh to gain the kind of respect the major bowls are looking for. Pat, they're on a roll. They're playing their best football of the year, and they're winning with defense. And you expect to see more good defense today. Notre Dame is ranked third nationally. Pitt always plays good defense with Coach Fazio. Boy, the Irish really rushing the ball. They're averaging over 250 yards a game. Alan Pinkett, he's on a record pace. He has five straight 100-yard days. And Alan Pinkett just needs 102 yards today to become Notre Dame's third 1,000-yard rusher. What makes him really so successful is the way he reads blocks, the way he can hide behind those big offensive linemen of his, find an opening, and dart through it before the defense can find him. Pinkett and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against the Panthers of Pittsburgh, a series that began in 1909. It's a beautiful day for football. An old rivalry, Pittsburgh against Notre Dame, and we have a gorgeous day for football. Temperature 54 degrees. The officials, we have a split crew from the Big Ten and the Collegiate Independent Football Officials Association. The referee from Dayton, Ohio, is John Nealon. Ready to kick off, number eight, John Carney. Now, Notre Dame actually won the toss, but they waved it off. As an end result, they will have the option to begin the second half of play. And there is Nealon out of Dayton. James Riley, Bob Walker, Joseph Carroll, Larry Nemers, Tom Klein, 
and Michael Donato, the men in charge of the game as Carney is ready to go. Matt Stennett and Chuck Scales, the twin men back to receive the kick. The 47th meeting between these two, and Carney really got into it. At the 20-yard line is where Pittsburgh will set it up offensively. Let's look now at the backs and receivers for the Panthers. At quarterback, number 15, John Congemi. He's completed 56% of his passes and eight touchdowns. Number 21, Mark Bailey, their leading rusher. He had 142 yards against Navy. And in the offensive line, perhaps America's best offensive lineman, number 79, Bill Fralick. Fralick, it weighs in at 290 pounds. From the 20-yard line, John Congemi, who's 4-2 and two as the starting quarterback for Pittsburgh. Congemi will get off to Marlon McIntyre, number three. He and Bailey will alternate at the fullback spot. And McIntyre, out of Christdale, Pennsylvania, is stopped by Mike Yan. And now defensively, let's look at Notre Dame. Up front, number 71, Eric Dorsey's played well all year, had two sacks last week. And speaking of being in the backfield, Mike Golick leads the team with 10 tackles for loss. And the linebackers in the middle, Tony Ferjanic, number 58. He's had two interceptions this year, playing very well. And Jerry Faust says that Joe Johnson is the best. He's the spark plug of the defense. Second down, eight for the Panthers. And Jimmy on a delay, giving off to Mark Bailey. As we mentioned, he and McIntyre will alternate at fullback. Rick Naylor, number 37, made the stop. And it's going to be third down and two now for Pittsburgh. Foge Fazio, his second year as coach. He wants to play football the Foge Fazio way. He likes to play conservatively, offensively, and play tough pit defense. Third down two from the 28. Mantle. Late arriving in the huddle now. Pat Schiffani, a tight end, number 85, comes in for Pittsburgh. They have four seconds to get the snap off, two, and they made it. Off to McIntyre. Check that. Joe McCall. And McCall has the first down to the 32. Tony Furjanic, 58, and Naylor, 37, with a stop. As Jerry Faust would like to win today, and that would be the most wins he's had in a season at Notre Dame. Interesting in the first third and two situation that Pitt came up, up under. They didn't run left over Bill Freilich. It's something we want to watch here today. But third and two, they, sw they swept to the right side of the football field. So Pittsburgh getting their offense started successfully with a first down. Now operating from the 32. A single running back is set behind Congemi. That is Bailey. With time, the intended receiver, Chipani, a freshman out of Pittsburgh, number 85. Tony Furjanic, the middle linebacker, defending for Notre Dame. What Pittsburgh wants to do here in this football game, particularly in the first half, is be unpredictable. We've seen them run the ball successfully for a first down there on their second first down of the game. They drop back and tried to throw the ball, but they want to mix it up today. It's the only way they feel they can play with Notre Dame. Now, Jimmy has really improved. He's looked over the defenses. He's been able to audibleize this year for Coach Fazio. Second and ten. Mishandled snap. Jimmy's able to get on it. A little pushing and shoving above him there. Bill Fralick mixing it up with Mike Kovaleski. And Mike Kovaleski now comes limping off the field. As you can see, the mishandled snap here, John Kajemi, the quarterback, never really got a handle on the ball. He comes right back up to him, luckily, but it puts him in a third and 13 situation. Third and 13, as you mentioned. Kovaleski has checked out at the linebacking spot. He's the freshman out of Newcastle, Indiana. Third down now, 13. A little delay, and this time Bailey goes nowhere. For Janik, 58 is there. And so after an initial first down, Notre Dame stiffens defensively. For Janik, young, a sophomore, they think he could be a future All-American. Like we said, he is the young man in the middle. It stopped it up, has two interceptions this well this season so far. He, those two young linebackers of Notre Dame's have played well all season long. It was a question mark coming into the season. Tony Recchia will kick. He's averaging 41-3. Joe Howard is back for the Irish. Fine kick. Howard, the last moment, signals for the fair catch at the 36-yard line. Tony Recchia, 37-yard punt. 
the Irish will have the football for the first time. 11.58 to go in the first quarter, and offensively, let's take a look at Notre Dame. Quarterback Steve Berline, the freshman from California, completed 54% of his passes for four touchdowns. The exciting Alan Pinkett, seven straight 100-yard days. Boy, he's had a great year. And in the offensive line, Larry Williams, number 75. Coach Faust says he is an All-American. All he weighs is, what, 284? <laughs> Large man. First down now for the Irish. Howard is split out to the bottom. Smith and Pinkett, the running backs. Here is Pinkett. Pittsburgh reacts very well. Troy Hill, number 22, a cornerback, supporting very effectively. Let's look now at that Pitt defense. The defensive line, number 71, Bill Moss. He's an All-American. He has six sacks this season. Now Bill Winlinkowski, Al Winlinkowski, I should say, is leading them in sacks with 11. He's been a leader. The, lo the linebackers, Troy Benson in the middle. He's their leading tackler. Watch Tom Flynn. They are going to attack him. They want to have some Flynn beaters. <laughs> it's going to take it. They've designed their offense to attack him. Second down, nine and a half. Pinkett again, and Pinkett will cross the 40 to the 41. Ray Weatherspoon, the strong safety, over to make the stop. It'll come to a third and six. Darrell, we mentioned how Pinkett is small, diminutive, and that he likes to hide behind those offensive linemen. There you're going to get the view, if you're a defender, how hard and how difficult sometimes it is to see Alan Pinkett. That's really an advantage for Pinkett, and he uses that ability. Pat, I think it's so interesting. So small, but he likes to run inside. He's a good inside runner. He is strong. He bench presses 375 pounds and can break tackles. Third and six for the Irish. Two receivers split to the top. Burline to throw. And nobody looking. Smith had his back to the pass. Weatherspoon, the safety, was closest to the football. Little mix-up on the play. Well, Notre Dame was trying to run a screen pass there, a very safe call on third and six, but Pittsburgh defense read it beautifully. Berline really should have thrown that ball out of the, over the sideline, but made it too close. Weatherspoon really had a play on it. And now Blair Keel, number five, will come in to kick to this man. Tom Flynn, a very, very dangerous punt returner. Blair Keel for the year, averaging 40.5. He continues at that pace. He'll set an all-time career punting average here at Notre Dame. Flynn did not call for the fair catch. Notre Dame thought he did. There's a flag on the play, and now they are saying he did signal for one. <laughs> Someone's confused down there. Flynn's going back to argue his cause. He says he did not signal for the fair catch. I believe they didn't get two yard, the two yard cushion that you need to have to receive the punt. Well, that was a 35 yard kick by Blair Keel. Now here's a look at Tommy Flynn. If he raises his hand at any time, it's a fair catch. He did not raise his hand there, but he needs two yard cushion to be able to catch that ball. The Notre Dame defender did not give him that two yard cushion. the 1027 mark of this first quarter we're going to have a delay with no score Notre Dame Stadium there's a lot of low-priced trucks out there but this one's the best truck value Mazda V2000 Sundown at 5795 it's the only economy truck with a five-speed steel belted radials tinted glass and full carpeting all standard which also happens to make it the lowest priced truck in America with all that standard equipment the way some business people spend their time has very little to do with a clock. At Apple, we understand that business as usual isn't anymore. That's why we make the most advanced personal computers in the world. And why soon there'll be just two kinds of people. Hi. Those who use computers. Yeah, I'll be home for breakfast. And those who use apples. Saturday, they're dropping like flies. Anthony Andrews, Deborah Reffin, Pamela Bellwood, and Harry Morgan in Agatha Christie's sparkling cyanide. Tom Flynn, a subject of some controversy. What it amounted to on that play was one official thought he had signaled for the fair catch and took off, but what it was actually is they didn't give him that two-yard buffer zone, a 15-yard penalty against Notre Dame, and Pittsburgh now has it at their own 39. McIntyre and Joe McCall in the backfield. Conjemi on first down to throw. 
He hits his man at the 47-yard line. That catch was made by Chapani playing a lot. That's only his third catch of the year. Clint Wilson usually is the man they throw to at the tight end spot. It was a good read by John Kajimi there, too, as well. They double-covered his outside receivers, came right to the man he should have. And this is showing you the maturity and the progress that John Kajimi has shown all season long. He came to his secondary receiver, his tight end, hit him for eight yards. Second down. Let's make it a long two to go. Straight ahead, Bailey. Bailey to the 50-yard line. That looks like he has enough for the first down. Eric Dorsey, 71, making the stop. Bailey had the best day of any pit back. 142 yards against Navy. He is their leading ground gainer, and you don't see a lot of fullbacks nowadays, Pat, that lead you in rushing. He's a pretty good pass receiver as well. He's caught nine balls, and this is one of the things that the pit coaches like about him. He has soft hands. The first down run to the 50-yard line. Pittsburgh now with a good field position. McCall and McIntyre in the backfield. Looks like Conjemi has changed the play. He gives to McIntyre, and he goes for six yards. Rick Naylor making the stop. That forward wall doing a good job offensively for Pittsburgh. Let's take a look at the linebackers of Notre Dame. Joe Bars and Tony Ferjanic. They're going to read and react as, as John Kajemi called an audible here. They're about four or five yards deep off the ball so they can see what's happening. They step up, take the blocks on, and you see 37, an outside linebacker, Rick Naylor, come over and put the stop on McIntyre. Other than Fralick and Sweeney, that's a very young Pittsburgh line. Second down, four. Kajemi... Bill Wallace changes it at the five, touchdown. Bill Wallace, a possession type receiver that time, made a beautiful move on the football, wide open at 44 yards. Gary, the pit coaches felt they could not line up with Notre Dame and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They felt they had to throw the ball early and deep, and that's what they saw something there where Bill Wallace caught the deep ball for 44 yards. A good call. Now, there's a penalty flag at the nine-yard line. We'll check that for you. That was Pat Ballage trying to defend on the play against Wallace, and he adjusted so well. We're going to have a personal foul coming up be a dead ball foul so it will be assessed on the ensuing kickoff but Wallace Pat not known for his speed he's the type of guy that will fight you for the football and I was really impressed the way he changed when the ball was just a little underthrown. it seems like every team needs a receiver like that and Bill Wallace is one of those possession type receivers but we've seen him in two different situations catch long touchdown passes Patrick Viancourt, the man who won it last week against Syracuse to attempt the point after it's a funny looking kick and he missed it man who beat Syracuse with seven seconds with a 43-yard field goal misses a very important point after. We're going to take a look at this touchdown as John Kajemi throws to Bill Wallace, number 25, his split end. It's interesting that they're picking a number 40, Pat Ballage, the same team, the same man that Miami and Bernie Kozar picked on against in the Miami Notre Dame game early in the season. But you can see Ballage falls down. Bill Wallace adjusted to the ball beautifully, came in and caught it for, a, for the big game. One more look at the throw. So Bill Wallace with his 20th catch of the year out of Flemington, New Jersey, and Pittsburgh leads it six to nothing. You told me to take the second one. I didn't know yeah, if you know. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Well, that's, that's fine. a strange play, wasn't that? It just well. Um, Go ahead. They're picking on, you know, it's interesting. Like I said, they're picking on, picking on Ballard. Yeah, that's what we had in that first game. First game against Miami, picked right on. Yes, yeah. sir. I think this crowd doing here fine. is a little stunned. We're doing good. Yes, doing fine. Experience Mazda. Wallace, who says that Fred Belichnikoff is his hero, his idol. Might be the other way around now, the way he caught that. Well, like he caught a long one here today. We saw him catch two long touchdown passes against West Virginia early in the, earlier in the season. Now, the 15-yard penalty sets the ball up at the 45 of Notre Dame. Brian Cordu missed the point after will kick off, and going back will be Greg Bell. He'll not bring it up. A lot of action today. Let's check up on the results. NCAA today, and here's Brent Musburger.
Gary, here's a big one. Norman Julius Esiason, known affectionately by his father and the rest of us as Boomer, has just put Maryland ahead of Auburn, but Auburn right now is on a drive. It's 17-14 Maryland. Back to Gary. Brent, thank you. We'll be checking with you. There's been a lot of games completed. Is this a late starting game from the 20-yard line now? Notre Dame with their second crack at the ball offensively. Spurline to Pinkett. He fumbles. Pittsburgh will be on it. They have it inside the 15-yard line. This is what Jerry Faust said. We cannot leave the football on the field, and they just did. Troy Hill, number 22. And Al Wendlinkowski, both of them there almost instantaneously. This Notre Dame offense right now is not good or powerful enough to turn the ball over like this down there in this kind of field position. You're right, this is exactly what Notre Dame can't afford to do. He's tackled from behind, the ball is on the ground. There are two pit defenders there, Troy Hill leading the charge. Look at Al Wendlinkowski, watch how aggressive these guys are. They're four or five yards into the backfield. There's a whole swarm of them around the ball. The ball pops loose, and there's two or three defenders there to make the recovery. The Panthers now at the 14-yard line of Notre Dame. Joe McCall takes it to the 10. Pittsburgh's not doing anything very fancy except for that one long pass. But here's the situation. Pittsburgh, they have some real question marks in their kicking game. They need to get seven points or a touchdown. We just saw the kicker miss the extra point by in court. It's a real adventure every time he tries to kick the ball. So it's important for Pittsburgh to try to march it in, into the end zone for the touchdown. We saw by in court miss a 20-yard field goal yesterday, and Foge Fazio just turned his back <laughs> and walked away said, and has continued today. He said, keep your fingers crossed. From the 10, second down now, six. McCall, McCall to the five, McCall is in, touchdown. Joe McCall, who was the offensive player of the week for his performance against Syracuse a week ago, he's been slowed all year long with a severe pulled calf muscle. But boy, he's going full steam today for these Panthers. Two plays, 14 yards after the fumble recovery. This is a stunned Notre Dame crowd right now. Let's see, will they bring Viancourt in again? That's the big decision. They may go for two to try to get back that point they missed. And that's what they're going to do. Pittsburgh, who missed the point after, now leading 12 to nothing, will go for two. Now, Pat, we talked about their two-point play yesterday. Now they're calling timeout because they want to discuss it. John Kanjemi is calling timeout. We're going to take a look at this touchdown here by number 34, Joe McCall, over the left side. Now they're only playing on a 20-yard field, remember, but he follows a couple of blocks. He gets a very nice block by Mark Bailey, his fullback, into the end zone for six. Let's take a look at All-American 79, Bill Freilich, the tackle. He comes off the ball. He's blocking on Eric Dorsey, number 71. Now, he dominates. He has dominated defenders all season long. He ties Dorsey up, pushes him back really into the end zone. A phenomenal block by Bill Freilich. Easy to see why he's All-American. And here's the result of that block by Bill Freilich. It makes the running back's job so much easier when you have people like Freilich up in front of you. The hole is clear. There's nobody there. McCall dances into the end zone. But that's good blocking up front. That's the reason they say that Bill Freilich is in a class by himself, a strong Outland Trophy candidate, and McCall was able to capitalize on it, a 10-yard touchdown run. So Kanjemi returns after Pittsburgh, asks for the timeout. Both these teams, Pat, and talking to their coaches on two-pointers, they'd like to roll out, wouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely, and they want to put people on the corner and try to get the ball either to a back or to a tight end. But this is a situation where the Pittsburgh offensive team needs to get the ball into the end zone, look for their tight end or a back in motion to get the ball. And what they do is they bring in two tight ends, and they will throw to Clint Wilson in this case. It's Tom Johnson also checking in. Looks like Wilson's out. Wilson has come out. It's Johnson and Chapani in there. Wallace split to the top. There they go. Instead, they dump it off to Bailey. He is going to take it in for two. Pittsburgh is really rolling. 
Well, it's one way to quiet a crowd here is to score early like this. Notre Dame is a very difficult place to play, as we both recognize. But if you can put some points on the board early, you take that home field advantage away. Let's look at the two points. It's a little screenplay, actually, to Mark Bailey, number 21. Now, really, he should not be into the end zone. There are two Notre Dame defenders there. It's just poor tackling. He breaks two tackles into the end zone for two points, but he should not have made that. Those two guys were Mike Golick and Joe Johnson, and Joe Johnson's about as physical as any safety you'll have. But that time, he just didn't stop Bailey at all so that point after now is a is a moot issue as they've gotten it back with a two-point play let's look at some other scores Pat while we have this opportunity boy that's quite a battle in the southeastern conference Florida leading Georgia Georgia hasn't lost in their last 27 regular season games they were tied earlier this year by Clemson and there is Clemson that would be a major upset North Carolina lost last week and there is a final Alabama outscoring LSU. Boy, they've been in a lot of shootouts this year, haven't they? Ray Perkins' offense has really been rolling. Look at Walter Lewis's stats for the day. The kickoff to Alonzo Jefferson. The freshman from West Palm Beach, Florida, brings it out to the 30-yard line. Keith Tinsley makes the stop. And at the 30, Notre Dame will have it. Tomorrow, we'll have NFL action coming your way. Many of you will see the NFL's winningest team, the Dallas Cowboys, who are 8-1. They'll take on the Eagles. All right, remember the last time they met. The Eagles lost it 37-7. They'd like to write that one. This game plus other regional action, all starting with the NFL today. From the 30, Notre Dame trailing 14 to nothing. Think it, Chris Smith in the backfield behind Burline. Flag on the play, pass complete to Bavaro, Mark Bavaro, the tight end, out to the 37-yard line, but a penalty play. Bavaro, they want to get involved in their offense. It's offside against Pittsburgh. Bavaro will figure very prominently today. They like to send him deep as well as that kind of pass we just saw. Well, they want to incorporate him more in the offensive game plan. Here we have a look at 75, Larry Williams. He is this All-American candidate for Notre Dame, played very well this whole season. But what Notre Dame can't do here, being 14 points behind, is try to get it all back right away. Now, they do have some plays for Tommy Flynn, Pittsburgh's free safety, who is aggressive, where they're going to try to go deep. But they can't try to get it all back. Notre Dame elected to take the penalty instead of the play, so they have a first and five now, just across the 35-yard line. Again, Smith and Pinkett split behind, lined up behind Steve Berline. A lot of time at the line of scrimmage. Did Pittsburgh get back? A penalty flag is thrown. Coming out of there is Chris Smith. Smith to the 49 of Pittsburgh. Weatherspoon and Flynn made the stop. That's a 15-yard run. Offside against Pittsburgh. They won't take that penalty. Chris Smith, the fullback. He is 6'2", 230 pounds. This is really a free down because Moss was offside. But Chris Smith doesn't pay any attention to the flag as any good back should. Bowls over a couple of players for a big play. Watch him pop out of the backfield here. Now They've get, been giving the ball to Pinkett all afternoon. Then they hand, hand the ball to fullback. He slips through while everybody's looking for Pinkett. But Chris Smith, a strong, bruising type of runner. He is from Cincinnati. During that last play and after it, Steve Berline was trying to lead this crowd in cheers. He was windmilling his arm. That shows you some poise for a freshman. A young man who told us that he was just amazed that he was a Notre Dame quarterback. No, he called home, talked to his girlfriend, and said, I can't believe I'm the Notre Dame quarterback. He's enthused. Well, that gain now is going to come back a little bit because we have another penalty. This is a dead ball foul again, this time unsportsmanlike against Notre Dame. So instead of being at the 49 of Pittsburgh, it's back now instead to the 37 of Notre Dame. And it's first and 25. It's now first down and 25 because the run does count. But then you move it back 15 yards after the dead ball foul. Burline. Wide open Joe Howard. And Flynn may have gotten a hand on the ball at the last moment. Very well thrown that time by this freshman. But you're right. Take a look at Steve Burline and Tommy Flynn, the free safety of Pittsburgh, does 
cause some problems there as Joe Howard's coming over the middle as an in route. He drills the ball, but Tommy Flynn steps in front of him right there. But this can set something up a little bit later. If Flynn is up there making those kind of plays, Notre Dame ought to be able to throw behind him. Howard should have caught that ball. Flynn was not there actually to hit the ball, but of course he did intimidate him. Second down, 25. Burline on the play action. Bavaro, he dropped it. Mark Bavaro dropped one at the 48-yard line, third and 25. Let's go back to New York now for Auburn. An update on Brett Musburger. Gary, it did not take Auburn long. After the kickoff versus Maryland, they marched the length of the field, and here's their All-American running back, Bo Jackson, taking the pitch out of the bone, and he scampers in. Auburn leads now over Maryland, 21-17, a lot of time left in the fourth. Back to Gary. All right, Brent, keep us posted on that one. What a battle in the SEC. Third down now, 25 for the Irish, who have not been able to hang on the ball the two previous plays. Allen Pinkett out to the 40. Look at him, dart his way to the 47, hit hard there, but they're a long way short of the first down. Bill Moss and T Troy Hill combine on the stop for the Panthers. We have an upset in the making. East Carolina playing Miami of Florida. East Carolina is a good football they team. They played well all season long. How about that Doug Flutie? Look he, at that. He is so much fun to watch. The only lost they have is against West Virginia. Fourth down. Blair Keel will now kick for the Irish. He had a 35-yard kick the last time, and there's Flynn. Flynn, a very intelligent player. No real rush is put on. Blair Keel gets it high. Flynn, this time, makes sure that they have the fair catch, and he has it at the 16-yard line. Pittsburgh, after that 36-yard punt, has the football, and the Panthers have a 14-point lead. I just start with a 14 to nothing lead. John Conjemi with a 44 yard touchdown pass. A call with a 10 yard touchdown run. And here's McIntyre out to the 20 yard line. What's remarkable about this start is the Notre Dame entering today had allowed only 17 first quarter points. And they've already given up 14 today. Let's look at All American candidate center Jim Sweeney from Pittsburgh. He's going against number 94, the freshman Mike Griffin of Notre Dame. He dominates him there. This is the reason, again, that Pittsburgh has been so good up in the trenches, allowing these backs to, uh, to pick their holes. Watch him. He just buries number 94, Mike Griffin. Griffin out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. He's a street fighter, and he's going to have to fight like one today. <laughs> fight a little better. Second down, seven now for Pittsburgh. Contini has a block. It's incomplete, and he just disappeared from sight on that play. Looks like number 37, Rick Naylor, the outside linebacker, defense then came in and knocked that ball down. But there was a whole wave of Irish defenders in his face. Notre Dame trying to capitalize on their field position. This is the 47th meeting between these two foes. This series will not be played the next two years. But through the years, it has been a tough physical game. And right now, Pittsburgh's getting the better of it. From the 19, third down, seven. And Jimmy with time, Wallace is there. That's a first down catch to the 31-yard line. They're picking on Pat Ballage, number 40, a 12-yard completion. Well, you mentioned Pat Ballage, you're right. We saw Miami pick on him, and here we see again Pittsburgh going after him. Remember, they threw the ball deep to him for a touchdown. What do you do now? You come back and you throw a 10 or 12-yard out pattern. Ballage has to be concerned deep because Wallace has already beat him for a 44-yard touchdown. Ballage has kind of grown into this position. He's a sophomore out of Pueblo. We remember earlier this year, West Virginia went after it, but he started fighting them. Scratching in a claw. First down across the 30 to the 31. Get to Joe McCall. He has a lane, and he converts it into a five-yard pickup. Joe Johnson coming up. Joe Johnson, as we said at the start of the game, according to Jerry Faust, the best in the country. There's West Virginia. Now, they'd lost two in a row before today, so they bounce back strong. Michigan coming back after the Illinois loss. And Duke now has won two in a row. North Carolina State under Tom Reed. That's uh, kind of a surprise there. Memphis State. Second down, five. 
Jimmy will dump it off to McIntyre. And McIntyre is going to be short of the first down. Troy Wilson, the freshman from Frederick, Maryland, over to make the tackle. It's going to be third down and still two yards to go. Wilson is playing for Stacy Toran, who's been hurt. And here's a look from the defensive backfield. You see Joe Johnson, number 27. Again, they're playing double zone, which means they're doubling the outside receivers. Jimmy dumps the ball off here to McIntyre. Now you're going to see some people come up. There's the freshman, Troy Wilson, who comes up, puts a big hit on him, and stops him from gaining the first down. I saw Troy Wilson on Jerry Faust's TV show. What an articulate young man, a freshman. Here is Joe McCall, and on the third and two, he has the first down. Virjanic making the stop. But Pittsburgh, after the bad field position, has now been able to move the ball out to the 43. Both third and two situations, Pittsburgh has run away from Bill Frelick, the All-American tackle, to the right side, and both times picked up the first down. Pittsburgh with the lead. They still remember last year when they were the number one ranked team in the country, unbeaten. And Notre Dame came in and beat them. So today, they have the advantage early. Matt Stennett has checked in. McIntyre and McCall, the running backs. We haven't seen Dwight Collins today and may not. Here is McIntyre on a first down. He is able to convert it to the 47. Mike Griffin making the stop again. The reason we're probably seeing a lot of Griffin 94 is that John Autry, the starting nose tackle, has been sick this week. A couple of days in the infirmary here at Notre Dame. And so the freshman seeing a lot of playing time. Domination by the Pitt offensive line, really. We've seen Jim Sweeney and Bill Freelich really control the defensive line of Notre Dame and let, some, let their running backs some holes or some yardage there. Joe Moore, their offensive coordinator, said, Pat, there's seven trees that run around. We're going to have to knock down, and they're doing it right now. And Jimmy off to Bailey. Bailey doesn't get a lot. Rick Naylor, the veteran among that linebacking corps, knocks him out of bounds. Line of scrimmage will be at the 46. It'll be still third and seven. Changes defensively. Greg Dengens checks in at a defensive end. Dane Spielmaker comes in in the secondary. That's Spielmaker number 34. One of the few seniors that play on this Notre Dame team. I believe they only have four senior starters, so they're going to be very good next year as well. From the 46, third down and seven for the Panthers. And Conjemi's changing the play. And whatever he changed to, it worked pretty well. However, they'll be short of the first down. Wallace with the catch. Ballage defending at the 50-yard line. At the 50. I'm going to be fourth down. You know, it was an interesting audible on third and seven, seven. He audible to a quick out, a short out route to, to Bill Wallace. And generally, that's not going to get you seven yards. And did not. In fact, they were three short. Wallace, however, has three catches for 61 yards. And now, what do we got here? A mass substitution. Recchia comes running on with a punt team. They were acting like they might go for it. But Notre Dame was ready for it. Checking them out. Here is Recchia. Oh, he hit this one well. Howard's going to let it hit, and it'll go in for the touchback. At the 20, the Irish will have it. A 50-yard kick by number 42, Recchia. Pittsburgh thus far dominating this game with a minute 42 left to the first quarter. Congratulations are in order for number 83, Mike Favorite of Notre Dame. He is a winner of the National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete Award. And Pat, you received that honor. Yeah, and I'm still very, very proud of it. Quite a few outstanding young men each year awarded. We'll take a look at that list in a moment. From the 20-yard line, Mark Brooks now in at fullback, along with Pinkett. The Irish trailing 14 to nothing. They're going to blitz. Weatherspoon faked it. Nope, he's not coming. Here's Brooks. He's met by Benson, number 54. Let's look at those guys, Pat. It's a good group. Very good group. I remember when I received this scholarship, I had to give the acceptance award, had to speak right in between Jerry Ford and Bob Hope. How did you get chosen for that? <laughs> the highest GPA, I guess. <laughs> There's some fine. Look at Steve Young. Now, he has just been sensational this year at BYU. And look at the athlete and scholar he is. We saw Brian O'Mara a little early in the year at SMU. Second down, nine yards to go for the Irish. Alan Pinkett trying to get outside. He's got the corner. He's got the first down. 
Nice burst by Alan Pinkett to the 35. Melvin Dean eventually was able to catch up with him, a 13-yard run. You have to be impressed with the way Alan Pinkett sets up his blocks and makes people miss him. You're going to see him again. He's deep in the eye. He's supposed to go off tackle, but he breaks it outside. Now, he's going to give a little juke there to Weatherspoon, but he set that up. He's going to set up right here. Then he gives him a shoulder, but you see some of the strength and elusiveness of Alan Pinkett. As you said, Matt, he needs 102 yards coming into today. Become the third player ever in Notre Dame history to rush for 1,000 yards in a season. On the 35, first down. Think it again. And that's what he's so tough at doing is right up the middle, kind of hiding behind that humongous offensive line. Chris Dolman eventually made the tackle. It'll bring up second down. You're right. They are very, very large, large up front again. See if you can find Pinkett. He is lost there behind all the big bodies. Finally, he darts through, but by the time you see him, he's already four or five yards into, into, the, game, into the game. And walking up front, watch 75, Larry Williams. They say he is an All-American. Here he pulls and clears the way for Pinkett. Actually, Pinkett gets ahead of Larry Williams. Larry Williams didn't do his job there. He couldn't find him because of Williams. As straight ahead, the fullback. Going to be short. It's going to be third down. Another Auburn update. Brent Musburger standing by. Let's go to New York. Gary, this time it is Tommy Agee again. Maryland's defense looking for Bo Jackson. The middle was open. The linebackers took the fake. 44 yards. Agee has rushed for over 100 yards. Incidentally, East Carolina still leads Miami. Five minutes to go. They're up by a point. That would be a major upset. Well, Brent, you should be surprised. We had five teams in the top 20 get beat last week, so we may have some more upsets today. We have come to the end of the first quarter. Pittsburgh is leading Notre Dame 14 to nothing in this old rivalry at Notre Dame Stadium. Dwight Collins, who has 23 career touchdown catches for Pittsburgh, not going to play today, severely sprained ankle. But his teammates leading 14 to nothing. Here's a flea flicker. Burline can't get a chance to throw the ball. Last year, you might recall, against Pittsburgh, Blair Keel threw a 54-yard touchdown pass on that same play, but this time it's an eight-yard loss. In the last couple of weeks, Notre Dame has been very successful against USC and Navy with trick plays. This time they did not fool Pittsburgh. Did the they were covered. They put a good rush on Burline, but his receivers downfield, both of them, were well covered. Did not fool the pit defense. Blair Keel comes in to kick. Bob Bukowski was the first man through on that defensive charge. And Tom Flynn will have good field position if he fields this one correctly. Look at Pittsburgh jumping around. They're trying to draw him off. Here's Blair Keel. He hits this one a ton. Back at the 20 is Flynn. And Flynn does a nice job bringing the ball out to the 30-yard line. A 45-yard kick, a nine-yard return. John Mosley down to make the stop for Notre Dame. The first quarter not only dominated score-wise, but Pat, almost every statistical category. You can see the yards rushing, but really it's been up front. The Pitt offensive line has really dominated the defensive front of Notre Dame. I think that's where the story has been. Fralick and Sweeney in particular in that offensive line. Look at the time of possession. And the turnover, I think, by Notre Dame, too, was critical. Really gave a quick touchdown to Pittsburgh. First down now for the Panthers. Just inside their own 30-yard line. McIntyre and McCall, the running backs. Here's Joe McCall. He'll get a couple of yards. Virginic was there first for Notre Dame defensively. Notre Dame, the last five games, giving up only 5.4 points a game. And in the first quarter, they've been hit for 14. Well, in the last 22 quarters, they've only given up three touchdowns, and those have all have been rushing. But today, in the first quarter, they gave, gave up 14 points. So this Pitt team is a very, very good team, a team that Notre Dame has not played, really, the type of team they have not played the past five weeks. Well, Pittsburgh lost to Maryland 13-7, to 24-21 to 21 to West Virginia. Two tough teams. Second down, seven. Conjemi. Wallace again. And Wallace has a first down catch at the 44. And Bill Wallace is really doing a job on that secondary. Joe Bars made the stop, an 11-yard completion by Conjemi. This is round three of Bill Wallace versus Pat Ballage. The first two rounds went to Bill, Bill Wallace, and round three goes as well. You can see the defensive secondary. Wallace is at the top of the screen, a little delay route. He comes under, underneath Ballage. The ball very well thrown by Conjemi. He really could not help but catch that ball. 
The first down catch to the 44 for Pittsburgh. 13 15 to go in the second quarter. Congemi sideline. That was intended for Jeff Casper, number 88, who checked in. Ballage defending on the play. Pat, it seems to me on all your good college teams, you need a flyer, but you also need a guy like Wallace, a possession type guy. Well, you're absolutely right, and we've seen him do that so many times this season, and they've lost their fly flyer in Dwight Collins. So it's been amazing to me that Bill Wallace has been as effective as he has here today without the threat of Dwight Collins. Benjamin comes back in, Spielmaker come in for Notre Dame defensively. Second down, 10. McCall. McCall to the 50-yard line. Going to be four yards short of the first down. Daler and Wilson combined on the stop. It'll be third and four for Pittsburgh. And we talked about how Pittsburgh did not want to be predictable. They're throwing the ball in first down, and, and they were incomplete in first down. They faced a second and, and ten. Instead of throwing the ball again, they ran a sweep and picked up five or six yards. So that's good play calling, really, by this Pittsburgh team. Well, we were told yesterday by the Pittsburgh staff they didn't have the great running back, but they had the line that was knocking people down, but the backs weren't converting that. But McCall's done a pretty good job today, as has Bailey and McIntyre. Third and four. Oh, McIntyre's in trouble, but he struggles forward, and he got the first down. That was just an outstanding effort. Dengens and Mike Gann finally bulldogged him down, but he picked up a first down instead of a three-yard loss. You're absolutely right, and a very good call again on third and four. It's a passing down, but they ran a draw play to Marlon McIntyre, but he knows the bowl bids are out on the line today. He breaks a couple of tackles there. There really wasn't much there. He did it all by himself. He knew where the first down marker was, and watch the tight end the block of the block of the tight end, number 84, Clint Wilson. He comes down and puts the block on the middle linebacker for Janik to allow McIntyre some room. Clint Wilson is not known for his blocking. He's more of the receiver type, but he did the job there. First down, just short of the 45 of the Irish. The Jemmy end around. Stennett. Max Stennett, 24. He's got some room. He is set up. 25, 20. He's to the 17-yard line of Notre Dame. Joe Bars eventually tackled him a 28-yard reverse by number 24. Terrific play calling by this Pittsburgh team. We keep talking about that. They run the ball on second and down. They've thrown the ball on first down. Here's another first down where they run a reverse. They set it up by running some sweeps earlier in the game. And here, Matt Stennett, number 24, follows a couple of blocks, but really fooled the whole defense. Take a look at the defensive reaction. Everybody's looking for the pitch and the sweep. And then the ball is given to Stennett on the reverse. Picks up a nice block by Freilich. Follows his block for a big game. And now Conjemi on a first down changes the play. He wants to throw to the near side, and he's just getting rid of that one. Troy Wilson defending on Daryl Clark, number 36, who checked in. There's Wilson. That time, Conjemi, after changing the play, had his man covered. That's all he could do. The Notre Dame defense fooled him there. 7 of 11 is Conjemi. Clark, who's been out since the Temple game due to an injury. They're glad to have him back with Collins out. At Miami of Florida score a moment ago, it was East Carolina, but now the Hurricanes. Boy, what a year they are having. They're only lost the first game of the year to Florida. And Bernie Kozar has been impressive. impressive. Has he? Second down, 10. Oh, Joe McCall oh, slips. There is a penalty flag. Had a lot of rain this week in the South Bend area, and possibly that caused some of that footing difficulty. Going to have holding against Pittsburgh. Well, that offensive line has not done anything wrong up to this point. That's one of the few times that Foge Fazio has found anything wrong with that forward wall. Well, maybe they just haven't gotten caught yet. <laughs> you ask any defensive lineman, the offensive line holds on every play. Well, the Nebraska Huskers, well, 35-21. They are just rolling. Mike Rozier, what's he leading in rushing and scoring? And they're 9-0. Boy, they got some help today, didn't they, in that big eight race? Oklahoma losing? Sure. I'm not sure they needed much. Well, they still have that showdown in Norman. So the holding call now will make it second down and 20 for Pittsburgh. Coming in will be Bailey. McIntyre will leave at fullback. Both Bailey and McIntyre, Foge told us, spent the whole summer lifting weights. And their play has really improved. Three wideouts. 
Back in the 20, and the blue are there. That's the first sack of the game for Notre Dame and comes at a very big time as Gann and Naylor drilling back takes you completely out of field goal range. And that's exactly what Notre Dame was trying to do. Watch the pressure at the Notre Dame front wall. You see number 78, Mike Gann, slip a block. There's 37, Naylor right in his face. Takes Kanjemi out of field goal range, puts him in a third and a very long situation. Third and 28 to be exact. So the line of scrimmage, the 35-yard line. They have to go all the way to the seventh. So Notre Dame now holds, they hope, on this play. 10, 28 to go, second quarter. Clark is split out to the bottom. Wallace to the top. And Jimmy with time. Wallace, ooh. What a collision that time. Wallace had to avert his eyes off the ball because Chris Brown, number nine, was there. And Brown not getting up. I'm amazed that Wallace didn't take a harder shot. He just kind of acrobatically avoided him. Well, Chris Brown did get the worst of that, but watch number Bill Wallace. We've seen him be so effective, and what makes him so good, he's not afraid to come over the middle. Now, he knows he's getting hung up here, but he sees Chris Brown. Really, it does avoid him in midair, as you said, and Chris Brown is the one down and injured. Another look right there. The ball is thrown out in front of him. Wallace is not afraid to take those hits over the middle, and that's what makes those kind of receivers very effective. So are we going to have a delay in the action while they attend to Chris Brown? Are we going to have a field goal? We'll know when we come back. Physical series, and here's the result of it. Mike Kovaleski, the freshman linebacker, had ice on his knee. He was hurt in the first series. Chris Brown just came off the field a moment ago. They elect not to go for the field goal, and Tony Recchia will punt instead. It would have been a 40 or a 52-yard attempt if they'd gone for the field goal. The touchback will bring it out to the 20. Auburn and Maryland, big game. Let's go to New York. Here's Brent. Carry a dramatic conclusion. About three minutes to go, and Boomer Esiason has given Maryland a shot at an upset. It is now 28-23. Esiason throws still another touchdown pass. That's not the only big story. Less than a minute to go now. Miami clinging to that lead. They've gone ahead 12-7, as you know. All they have to do is hold on. They'll go to the Orange Bowl if they beat Florida State. Back to Gary. Not easy being 8-1. Miami's finding everybody coming after him. From the 20-yard line after the punt, Steve Burline and the Irish trailing 14 to nothing. Alan Pinkett. The quickness of Pinkett for three yards. Ray Weatherspoon, number nine, up defensively. We have a penalty flag way up the field in the secondary. Look like Melvin Dean and Chris Smith, a fullback from Notre Dame, got into it. That's 10, 15 yards away from the impact of the play. Well, you mentioned it is a physical type of series. These, both these two teams come after you. Can have another personal foul. This shows you how Notre Dame has just really floundered thus far. But give credit, too, again, somewhat to this pit defense. It's an aggressive defense. It's put pressure on it. They've been in Burline's face. But Notre Dame has, has to find a way to solve that problem. Perhaps roll Burline out, throw the ball a little bit more in first down, give Pinkett the ball on the flat on some screen passes, do a number of things to try to counteract the aggressiveness of this pit defense. A personal foul against Melvin Dean, the cornerback, moves the ball to the 48-yard line. Notre Dame has it first down. 9.47 to go until halftime. Burline to Pinkett, got a block, out to the 50, to the 40-yard line, first down. Pinkett, how quickly he made a 21-yard gain. Terrific eyes of Alan Pinkett as he sets up his blocks one more time, goes over the right side over Bavero and Perino. Picks up a couple of blocks there. Then he sets up the block by Mill Jackson. It's amazing what he can do, how he moves and grooves through the defensive secondary. As we watch again, the defensive secondary, you see Tommy Flynn coming up and put the stop on him. But he set up Mill Jackson's block as well. He moves and grooves, huh? <laughs> There's a gift to Chris Smith. And he'll fight for a couple of yards. The thing that impresses you about Alan Pinkett is what great character he has. Articulate young man, number 20. And he's really been encouraging to Greg Bell, his running mate, who's been hurt all year long. He talks about him being a, a tandem, a pair. 
And like we said, he has 54 yards today, needs 102 yards today to be the third rusher in Notre Dame history to gain 1,000 yards. Vegas Ferguson did it twice, Al Hunter once. Second down, eight. Pinkett, a workhorse. He will move it to the 35-yard line, still be four yards short of the first down. That time, Troy Benson, the leading tackler for Pittsburgh. Joe Paterno beating up on his alma mater today. 38-21. And from the Ivy League. Looks like Larry Williams, the All-American tackle there of Notre Dame, is coming off the field. It is a physical game. That's the third Irish player to come limping off. Mike Shiner will replace him, a senior out of Sunnyvale, California, number 74. Third and five for the Irish. Burline with excellent protection. And he threw it into Tommy Flynn's hands. And Flynn will bring it out to the 40. And I'm not sure what Burline saw in that play. That was right to Tommy Flynn. Bavaro made the tackle. Tommy Flynn is going to provide a lot of big plays because he's not always where he's supposed to be. Now watch Steve Burline. He is locked into the right side of the field. He's looking at the receiver the whole time. And Tommy Flynn, the free safety, he reads that. He steps up in front. He is supposed to be playing deep center in the middle of the field. He is not supposed to be there. But Burline, because he looked at that receiver the whole way, Flynn read him and made the interception. Flynn with the interception. That is his second of the year. They wanted to have some Flynn beaters, but right now, Tommy Flynn is beating Notre Dame. The Golden Dome, the stadium that Rockney built, the traditions, the echoes here have not impressed Pittsburgh. They have come in here, and right now they lead 14 to nothing. They have just picked off a pass, and they have it first down at their own 39-yard line, and Jerry Faust, his team is struggling. Wallace and McCall will be split to the bottom. That's Daryl Clark in motion. And Jimmy off to McIntyre. McIntyre to the 45-yard line. Joe Bars made the stop. Pat, during that last break, you were saying that Pittsburgh has really been unpredictable offensively. And that's exactly what they wanted to do coming in here. And today, out of 31 plays, they've rushed the ball 19 times and passed, passed it 12 times. That's really mixing it up. And we've also seen them reverse that they've run as well. So they are being unpredictable, and that's led to 14 points. You saw a moment ago, Miami won that ball game that Brent was talking about. And so they're now 9-1. and one. Second down and four. McCall, he has a first down and then some. He's inside the Notre Dame 45-yard line. Ballage and Naylor combining on the stop. McCall already has 47 yards rushing. Bill Freilich, number 79, the tackle. Now watch how long he's going to hold his block and allow McCall, number 34, to pick a hole. There he is, Joe McCall, as he darts through another hole led by Bill Freilich and Mike Durundo. Again, there's 79, Freilich at the top of the screen. Now he's not satisfied with just holding on to him for a second and let McCall go back, but he just buries him on his back against Mike Golan. Did you see that block by Bailey, too, out of the fullback spot? First down at the 44. Can Jimmy and deflected a penalty flag has been thrown. It was Ballage who got a hand on the ball. Casper, the intended receiver. Offside against Pittsburgh. It was before the play. Coach Fazio has to be happy the way his team is playing. They did not play very well against Syracuse last week. But that's a sign of a good football team when you don't play well and you still win, as they did last week. They had this 13 kicker. They did not know anything about Pat Viancourt. They all of a sudden, they find a way to have this guy come in and kick a 43-yard field goal. There's the play selection that we were talking about a little earlier, Gary. They have really mixed it up. That was the exact quote that Foge gave us. We've got to mix it up today, and they're doing it. First down, 15. McCall finds very little running room. Joe Johnson made sure of that along with Mike Gann. Mike Gann has started to play very well for Notre Dame the last five games. He was below expectations early in the year, but now he's done a fine job. Look at that. Final, Auburn over Maryland. Boy, Auburn has lost only to Texas, and we did that game at the start of the year, and look what they've done since. Bo Jackson's really got on, 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 on the roll, hasn't he? Sure has at halftime era. And Brent will update him. The scores, they'll have highlights. And Jimmy on second down and 14. McIntyre. And McIntyre will make it to the 41-yard line. Rick Naylor out of Cincinnati Moeller, who played for Jerry Faust in high school. Making the stop. 
Pittsburgh with a field position with the lead and with time ticking away here in the first half. It's third and seven. If they score again here in the first half, remember this Notre Dame team, it's a very conservative offense. I don't believe they're the catch-up type of offense. They're trying to protect Steve Berline. But remember, Blair Keel is always a possibility to bring in in a situation like this. They think psychologically he's ready to play. Third down seven. He's in trouble. And Jimmy gets away. He does it now. Spielmaker 34 wrestles him down. And that could be something that Notre Dame could build off of. 10-yard loss. Still plenty of time for Notre Dame to come down with five minutes left to get on the scoreboard before halftime. That's very important for them. It really would give them an emotional lift. Recchia will kick. Recchia with a 40.3 average on two previous attempts. Joe Howard will go back for the Irish. 14 to nothing, the Panthers. No big rush put on. Recchia gets a nose high, does not turn over, and it comes back up the field, and Melvin Dean is over there to down it. So the Irish will not have good field position, but they haven't had it all game long. That was a 31-yard punt. Notre Dame trying to get back in this one. Hey, Rick. If you're looking for an investment firm, I've got some advice for you. I want to tell you the single best way to choose that investment firm. Just ask a lot of investors a lot of questions. Ask if their broker really listens, really cares, and ask them how they're doing. I'm telling you this because I believe you're going to hear a lot of good things about one company, Dean Witter. I think you'll find Dean Witter worth asking about. Dean Witter, worth asking about. Shots are shot, threads are thin, mufflers gone. Well, come on in. There's more for your life as Sears. Where else could you change your tires, take your rain, smooth out your ride, and catch the game? There's more for your life, for the times of your life. There's more for your life at Sears. Tuesday, when a kid gets framed, Ben takes it very personally. Do you think you're sort of acting more like his father than his lawyer? But will his trust lead to deceit the Mississippi? Steve Berline trying to recover from the interception he threw in the previous series. Line of scrimmage, the 20 for the Irish. They trail 14 to nothing. Berline to Pinkett. Pinkett's been their whole offense. He brings it out to the 23. Pat. Burline is an interesting story. He's thrown the interception, but they tell us that he has the ability to forget about that and move on. And that is very important for a quarterback, and that's what uh, Jerry Faust likes about him. And we saw that last week with Mike White and Jack Trudeau. They said they have the right temperament, the right stuff to play the position of quarterback. And part of that, again, is forgetting about your mistakes, because sooner or later, he's going to come up with a big play. This interception was his third of the year. Second down, seven. Think it again on a delay and a cutback. That's what he does so well, but nothing doing this time. Caesar Aldisart, 87, the number two tackler. You talk about linebackers. I don't know if there's any better pair, Benson and Aldisart. Both of them have played so well for Pittsburgh. Now third down and nine. Aldisert a very smart. He's a finesse player. Benson's kind of the hitman. And what makes them really effective is the front wall in front of them. Those guys keep the offensive linemen away from the linebackers, freeing them up to make some tackles. So a third down nine with 325 left until halftime. Jackson, Howard are split out. Burline needs a big play. He's got time to do it. Jackson is there. First down catch. Melvin Dean made the tackle, and Burline now with a first down at the 40. Mill Jackson, number six. He is the flanker. He's a sophomore from Fairfield, Iowa. He just, there's plenty of cushion there against number 28, Melvin Dean. The ball well thrown. Easy for Jackson to catch the ball. 19-yard pickup. That's the first time now the Irish have converted on third down. And that's interesting because coming into this game, they've converted on 49% of the third downs. Burline with time again. Jackson again. And all of a sudden, they're at the Pittsburgh 38. 
And, no and Notre Dame is doing a very good job of occupying Tommy Flynn to allow Mill Jackson to come underneath him. He's at the top of the screen there, a lot of cushion, but what you don't see is the other side receiver running through Tom Flynn so he can't break this pass up. But there's Mill Jackson, the ball is well thrown, and a good offensive scheme there by Notre Dame. You said this earlier, Pat, Notre Dame needs to have some success before the half ends. Well, 2.35 left. Like we said before, a score here will lift them emotionally and get them ready to come out for the second half. Alvin Miller has come in replacing Jackson at a wideout. Burline for Barrow did not see it. He overthrew him. He was wide open over the middle, too. He was Lankowski wide. Lankowski, a little pressure, though. You're absolutely right. That's precisely what made Steve Burline overthrow him. Watch him, number six, Al Wenglenkowski, come right off the corner. Number 74, Shiner, misses him. It was supposed to be a quick pass, but there's Wenglenkowski in Burline's face. Supposed to be quick, but not that quick. <laughs> well, Shiner's supposed to get in his way a little bit more. Isn't it? Well, Linkowski's been in a lot of people's ways. He had 11 sacks coming into this game. The senior, his wife, the secretary, or one of the secretaries in the Pittsburgh football office. Jackson and favorite now has come in. They're split at the top. Second and 10. Burline, pressure. He gets away, and now he doesn't. Wendlinkowski, the man we just mentioned, was there to put him down. So that's going to lose yardage and bring up third down. You're going to take another look at Al Wenglenkowski, number six. He's right there at the top of the screen. He's going to put some more pressure on him. But Notre Dame is trying to roll out, really trying to get away from some of the pressure. He has fights off really two blocks. You see him fight off Pinkett, number 32, Chris Smith. And there he tattoos Chris Berline, gives him a nice little kiss. But here's the reason why, how well covered these receivers are. The pit defense earlier was giving them some cushion, but now there's not quite the cushion there was before. As you can see, them well covered, and that didn't give Burline anywhere to go. Third down, 15. Burline sprinting out a throwback to Pinkett. He's going to have to do it on his own, and he can't get too far. Wing Lukowski for the third play in a row, fought off two offensive linemen of Notre Dame, really to make that play, to slow it down, allow him to get some help from the rest of that defense. But Wing Lukowski is playing beautifully. I think that is maybe an understatement. Two big back-to-back -back defensive plays. Earlier, he rushed Burline. It's fourth down. Notre Dame has asked for a timeout. Fourth down, and they will have 12 yards to go. They're going to make a decision here. We're going to take a break. Pittsburgh leads it by 14 points. Today, the most exciting new ideas in the hotel business come from Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn is a better place to be. It works much better. It tastes much better. Better and better. Really better. Holodex 2, the industry's first bimodal reservation system, ensures your room is waiting. Innovations like this make Holiday Inn Hotels number one. We're number one. We're worldwide host. First with what you want the most. Call 800 Holiday. Because the cost of all energies is rising, manufacturers of heating equipment have developed more efficient designs to help you keep costs down. That's good, but the claims can be confusing. So here are a few simple facts about natural gas. Gas delivers America's best energy value because gas is America's most efficient energy system. So when you invest in modern high-efficiency gas appliances, America's best energy value gets even better. Today and tomorrow, gas gives you more for your money. I say this apparently, apparently Blair Keel is going to punt on fourth and 12, but let's watch for the fake because there's only a minute 15 left in this first half. They have the ball at the 40 of Pittsburgh. The timeout, they brought their punt team on. Let's see, Chris Brown, he's looking around, see if everybody's in place. Pittsburgh, very suspicious. Oh, he's gonna kick it. Tommy Flynn, he... Fakes the fair catch, and it'll be at the six-yard line. Good and coverage that time by Pittsburgh. And Notre Dame has two timeouts there. Perhaps if their defense can hold. They can force a punt and get some good field position with some time left to score. Keels punt 32 yards with a minute seven. The line of scrimmage at the seven. That's where they're going to mark it. At halftime, Brandon Era scores and highlights. As a lot of games are now final. That Auburn Maryland game will have some outstanding action there. We'll have some highlights in Oklahoma. They're being upset in Columbia today. Missouri 
I think uh, leading that game and coming into the game, Barry Switzer lost only one time to Missouri in 11 years. And boy, that's a costly loss for him today. Missouri's had a couple of big wins this season. Now, Pittsburgh's asked for a timeout. They have one left. It's a kind of a precarious situation. Now, one thing they want to do is turn it over at this 14 to nothing lead with a minute seven left in the first half. A final, and that uh, was a low-scoring affair. And Iowa, they won in Madison, or leading in Madison in the fourth quarter. Boy, Nebraska can really score some points, can't they? Oklahoma State, in my estimation, is the best team in the country with two losses. They've lost to Nebraska and Oklahoma. Colorado, that's in Lawrence. That's a surprise. UCLA, now UCLA is unbeaten in the Pac-10. Arizona State, California, that's in Strawberry Canyon out there in Berkeley. And USC, well, the Trojans are leading. It's nice to see for a change. First down for the Panthers at the seven-yard line. Going to be very careful. Now, you know we have a new quarterback. Chris Jellick has come in at quarterback, and evidently they just wanted his sure hands at that quarterback spot now. Well, that's interesting. I would be putting in my second-team quarterback in this situation when you're backed up in the shadow of your goalpost. There he is. He's only thrown three passes. Notre Dame asks for a timeout. They have one left. Two outstanding schools here representing our telecasts. Notre Dame and Pittsburgh. And we're going to take an opportunity a little bit to take you through the campus, let you capture some of the flavor that we've had. So let's do that at this time. Research. On a second down, Jellick on a quick pitch to Joe McCall on a second and nine. Brings it out across the 10 to the 12. Pat, you're a little bit mystified, a little surprised that Jellick is in there. I remember a game earlier this year, Arkansas did the same thing. They brought in a backup quarterback just to be sure he didn't turn the ball over. Well, unless Jimmy is hurt, I don't understand putting Jellick in in that situation where you're backed up to your against your, your goal post. In those situations, we've seen so many second-team quarterbacks come in and fumble the snap from center. That's right. But Jellick is in there. He's got the best arm on the team. Just a rifle arm. Big down here. Third down. They give it off to McIntyre on third and four, and they are short. They and now Notre Dame's going to use their last timeout. I think we should mention that Chris Brown is back in the game. As you know, he was shaken up earlier, but he has come back into the secondary. Well, we took you through the Pitt campus, and now what a beautiful place they have here at Notre Dame, Indiana. On fourth down to kick 16 seconds left in this first half. Big rush. Fair catch called for by Joe Howard. Very fine kick by Recchia under some pressure, and I might add some real pressure. Three Irish players almost on top of him. A 40 yard kick. You talked about the pressure. They were going after it as Recchia steps into it, gets rid of it. It's amazing to me, actually, that the Irish didn't run into Recchia. They did a good job of staying away from them. Here, if you want to punt the football into the shadow of your goalpost, this is what you have to do. You catch the ball, and you hope you get some protection up front. And then you learn how to act. He gives us a little Lawrence Olivier here. <laughs> here could've, he goes. Could act. You know, you can pick somebody <laughs> up besides Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> He's not a bad actor. <laughs> from the 45. Irish have 10 seconds, and they have no timeouts remaining. Burline, short at the 35 for Joe Howard. That stops the clock with five seconds. Joe Howard last week touched a touchdown pass. You figure they've got to come up with something really unusual here. We're taking a look at Steve Burline. This is a different type of game than he has played in while he's been at Notre Dame. Most games he's played, he's been ahead. They've been protecting leads. Here he has to bring his team from behind. He has a big task ahead of him in the second half. He's unbeaten as a starter. He's 5-0. and oh. Alvin Miller has checked in. Three wideouts. Burline going for all of it. Miller is down there. So is Pittsburgh. And our first half has come to a close. The first half, we've seen a fumble by Notre Dame, which gave Pitt a quick touchdown, and the Pitt defense gave up a big play to Mike Boots, who Bill Wallace, the receiver. That's been the, uh, the difference. And I'll tell you, they're playing Pitt defense. They are tough, this Pittsburgh team. Our score at halftime, Pittsburgh 14, Notre Dame nothing. We'll be back with Brennan Error from New York with scores and highlights after this word about an upcoming show on CBS and a message from your local station. 
Tuesday, Lindsey Wagner. Parish of Notre Dame and Pittsburgh has dominated this first half of play. Not only on the scoreboard, but as far as total yardage is concerned. And Pat, as Era and Brent were talking about, the line of scrimmage has been all Pittsburgh. They really have controlled both lines of scrimmage. They've, out, they've controlled them on the offensive line and the defensive line. We see now Wing Lukowski being be in the backfield the whole first half. Well, look at the stats, 193 yards. Now, here's a play that will show you how effective the offensive line is going to be and has been. Joe McCall on the 10-yard touchdown run. After the turnover, remember, Notre Dame fumbled it, so Joe McCall followed a couple of his blocks, really was on the two-yard line before anybody was even close to catching him. And we're going to take a closer look of the domination of this pit team. Watch number Number 79, Bill Freilich, the All-American tackle. We've talked so much about him. He's against number 71, Eric Dorsey, who's a very good player as well. The ball starts in the 10-yard line. Watch where number 71 ends up on the 2-yard line. That's why McCall scored. And so Freilich and his running mates have this lead at halftime, and Steve Berline is in a catch-up posture. Pat, you pointed out. Every game he's been in, previous to this one, he's never been behind early. And it, like you said, it's a different position for him to be in. And whether they'll go to Blair Keel later on in this third quarter, we'll have to have to see. But this is a, team, a situation where Blair Keel, the pressure's off for him. If he does come in, it's a different type of situation than when he started. To update the quarterback situation even further, Pittsburgh, we understand, had an injury to John Conjemi. We're trying to get it updated. We were told he went into the dressing room prior to the end of the first half of play. That was the reason that Chris Jellick came in on that goal line play. Well, it was interesting, too. Chris G uh, Jellick, they say, has the strongest arm in pit history. That's what Foge Fazio told us yesterday. Well, if you are Notre Dame, this statistic coming up is not going to be what you like. You realize thus far this year, Pittsburgh has given up three points in the third quarter. And, you know, it's really important for Notre Dame to come out here in this third quarter and get something going, get back on the board, really get this crowd behind them. This is a very tough place to play when the crowd is on your side, but they have not given the crowd much to cheer about. They haven't been able to wake up the echoes. <laughs> Pittsburgh, Notre Dame, a game with major bowl implications. And right now, the Panthers with a 14-point lead. Blair Keel, the man in question as to whether or not he might come in and take over at quarterback. Moving ahead to next weekend, we have just selected and want to announce to you our game next week. We're going to be in Tucson, Arizona. The Wildcats of Arizona will play UCLA, who is leading today in their game and only unbeaten team right now in the Pac-10 as they have the battle for the Roses going to the Rose Bowl. How about Rick Neuheisel last week? We're going to have an interesting feature also as Aaron Parsegian will be going down to Miami to visit with Howard Schnellenberger, the coach of the Hurricane, and they're going to talk about the assistant coaches and how they communicate from the booth upstairs down to the sideline, the bench area, and call that very intricate, very complicated offense. And here is Fogues leading them out. And we do have a report on John Conjemi, the quarterback. He suffered a little ding in the head. He had his bell rung, but he's supposed to return here in the second half. So Conjemi, who gave him that 14 to nothing lead, missing the last series, Chris Jellick had to come in for him. Notre Dame, who had won, coming in here five in a row, trying today to pick up their seventh win, which would be the most that Jerry Faust has been able to produce. And here they come back on the field. Saturday, CBS Sports Saturday will return with an exciting show. You'll see reigning world figure skating champions, including Scott Hamilton. Boy, is he athletic. And Rosalind Sumners as they give special freestyle performances. And outstanding athletes will be coming from seven countries to compete in events which combine dance and gymnastics at the World Cup Acrobatics Championship. And then John Madden. He's going to get in a car. I know he's not going to go on a plane. <laughs> and he's going to explore some of the stories behind former NFL players who are coping with physical problems caused by football. Plus the Remsen Stakes. Devil's Bag. Remember that two-year-old Colt? Bob Fishman's been telling us about him. It's up for a horse of the year, I believe, honors. That's from Aqueduct Raceway, the 70th running, a mile and eighth of the distance. And Devil's Bag is trying to continue his quest for the horse of the year honors. So UCLA, Arizona, Sports Saturday. Hope you mark that down on your calendar. I was mentioning Rick Neuheisel. He was, what, 25 for 27 last week for UCLA? He has 17 straight completions, Pat, going into today. The record, I think, is 22, isn't it? That's By a, Steve Young of exactly BYU. Right, BYU. The Pac-10 record, I believe, is 21. You didn't have that? No, it was not set by me, believe me. 
Well, the Irish have their work cut out for them. Let's look now at the key people for Notre Dame. Steve Berline at quarterback in the first half. He was 3 of 10 for 44 yards and threw one interception. Has a test in front of him. Alan Pinkett, 11 rushes for 58 yards. Six of those rushes were on first down where he averaged five yards. And Chris Smith, two rushes for 18 yards. The crowd trying to get into this game, Pat. They have not really been in it yet. Going back deep to return the kickoff would be Greg Bell, who's playing with a very, very sore ankle. We didn't even know if he'd play today. By in court. Freshman Walkman, who was a nose guard in high school, kicking off. He hit it well. Bell out to the 20. 25. Big, strong junior to the 27-yard line. Melvin Dean made the stop. All right, let's look at some of the key people defensively for Pittsburgh. There's a smiling Bill Moss. We have not heard too much from him in the first half. We have heard a lot from that man. Al Winglenkowski has been all over the football field. And at linebacker Troy Benson, he's had an excellent first half as well. The line of scrimmage just across the 25 is where they marked it. Pinkett, Chris Smith on the backfield. Jackson, Howard, split to the bottom. Burline will roll that way, and he delivers to Howard, but Howard slips. Troy Hill was there. We've talked about it before, Gary, but it's always the importance of the first drive in each half. Here we have Notre Dame down by 14 points. They come out throwing the football, but this is a critical series for them and that young man right there, freshman Steve Burline. Larry Williams, by the way, is back in at tackle, the All-American candidate, number 75. You might recall he left in the first half. Second down, 10. Burline giving to Pinkett. He dances and kind of glides through there for yardage where there wasn't anything at all as Foge Fazio, right now his team, on top of the situation. Aldisert made the stop and it will be third down and eight. Foge played here at Notre Dame when he was linebacker and center and they lost. But isn't it amazing how, re how he remembered every play that was played in this stadium? That's what this stadium will do for you. Late for the Pittsburgh Panthers. They lost late in the game to Notre Dame and he'd like to win here today. Special place. Third down, eight yards to go. Mishandled snap, Burline recovers. Bavaro. That would have been a tough catch. He was hit hard, first by Tommy Flynn and then Ray Weatherspoon. Flynn just covers so much ground. Well, you're right. It was a tough hit by both of those men, but it was catchable by, by Vivero. The ball slips out of Burline's hand, has a composure to pick it up, stand in the pocket. The ball is a little high. Vivero goes up. It's catchable, but you can see number five, Flynn, and number Weatherspoon there to make life unpleasant for Vivero. So Notre Dame has to kick. There's Flynn. Remember, a year ago, Tommy Flynn got hurt in this game and was not the factor that he is today. They put a rush on. Tommy Flynn's going to run this one. But he doesn't go anywhere. Excellent coverage that time by Notre Dame, particularly John Mosley, number 48. 38-yard kick by Blair Keel. And so Pittsburgh will have the ball for the first time. And they look They're going to have Jelly coming in. Chris Jelly is going to be the quarterback. So can Jimmy, his bell rung in the first half, will not start the second half. Jellick, three of three in the passing department out of Pittsburgh, a sophomore. And before they get the play underway, we have a penalty play. So again, you got to re remember, Jellick has not taken that many snaps. A little mix-up out there. Let's look at the key faces now for the Pittsburgh offense. There's Bill Frelick. We saw some of the outstanding blocks that he had there in the first half. Mark Bailey's had three rushes for only eight yards. And Jimmy is out, and Jelly is in. Offside against Pittsburgh. It's first down and 15. Coach Fazio said Chris Jellick has a stronger arm than Dan Marino. That's saying something. Strongest arm he's ever seen. That is saying something. Here he is getting off to Joe McCall. McCall gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Mike Golick over to make the tackle. And defensively, let's look at some of the Notre Dame key people. 
Eric Dorsey, we saw him dominated in that one play by Bill Freilich down by the goal line. Tony Ferjanic, he's been good in the middle. And the freshman, Troy Wilson, has also played very well in the first half. A lot of freshmen on the two deep. In fact, they're playing, what, 12 of them? It's interesting, though, that Pitt has not picked on Troy Wilson. The freshman has gone instead against Ballage, who is a sophomore. Second down, virtually 10 yards to go for the Panthers. Back to McCall, and Notre Dame is there. Submarining underneath was Joe Bars, number 87. He continues to replace Mike Kovalescu, who went out early with the injury. Third down coming up. Watch Bill Freel. Joe Moore, his coach, says that he is the best offensive lineman in the country. It's not even close. Watch again how he dominates and pushes number 71, Eric Dorsey, five, six, seven yards in the backfield. Really incredible. Excuse me, Pat. The last moment now, Durando is coming off. Mike Dahl replaces him at guard. Third down, seven. Bailey, the intended receiver, and Pittsburgh will have to pump the football. And the crowd trying somehow to get the Irish rolling. Recky will be kicking. Joe Howard, 24, back for the Irish. The 47th meeting, these old foes, and right now Pittsburgh leading at 14 to nothing. Recky hit it well. Howard trying to get to the wall. Instead, he meets a wall at the 30-yard line. 42-yard kick that time by Recky. A 10-yard return. Bill McCormick on the tackle. Notre Dame. They want to get on the scoreboard. The Dome overlooking Notre Dame Stadium. All our scoring occurred in the first quarter. From Jenny with a 44-yard pass to Wallace. A call on the 10-yard run. Notre Dame has the ball for the second time in the second half. Allen Pinkett and Alley up the middle. He bursts ahead for the first down. Tom Flynn made the tackle. And Pinkett has virtually been all of Notre Dame's offense. Well, he's going to have to be a little bit more. But watch the big hole on the right side over Neil Mowney and Mike Perino. And Pinkett, again, sees the hole. He's good vision. He cuts back. He puts him in the eye formation. He can cut wherever he chooses. Right up there, he is galloping all over the football field. Big play, first down. They need some more of that from Alan Pinkett. He has 72 yards on 13 carries. Here he goes again, his 14th carry. Runs into Bavaro. He's tied in. Well, maybe got a yard. That last play, Pat, had to be encouraging, though, to the Irish. One of the few times they controlled the line of scrimmage. But you're going to watch some of the Pittsburgh defense. 54, Troy Benson. He is their linebacker. He is their leading tackler. They just do not give up. He bounces off a block there. He's down on the ground, but he's going to bounce back up. That's the thing about this Pitt defense, this Pitt team. They keep coming after you. Second down, eight yards to go. Burline to Pinkett. Pinkett breaks the tackle, breaks another one. He has a first down. Chris Dolman, 56, made the stop. But Pinkett and company now moving. Understand we have a final now. The Texas Longhorn. Boy, they've really had a battle the last two weeks. They got by Texas Tech 20 to 3. Today, 9 to 3 over Houston. Pinkett, after that last carry, is now 18 yards short of 1,000 yards for the year. First down at the 45. A delay to Pinkett. 40 yard line. Oh, he's fun to watch, isn't he? To the 39, Troy Benson. And there's Williams, who he mentioned is back in, but you can see he's limping around. He is hobbling around. They certainly need him here in this third quarter drive. But let's take a look at Larry Williams, the All American candidate, number 75. He is pulling. Remember, he's pulling on a sore leg, but he's trying to find give Pinkett some room. There's nobody there for him to block, but you can see he is playing under some pain. And he's come out of the ball game now. Shiner's replaced him. When you're that big and you have a leg bothering, it even accentuates the problem that Pinkett now is in trouble. And give credit to Bill Moss. Bill Moss is the man that they wanted to run away from today. That time they couldn't avoid it. He is so strong. And they had a free safety blitz on. Guess who else was there? Tommy Flynn. Came all the way up in the free safety position. 
This is a team, a defensive team, that's going to keep the pressure on. There is Bill Moss. He's an All-American last year, has six sacks. Comes up with a lot of big plays. Third down and ten, a one of seven on third down conversion. And like I said, coming into this game, they've uh, almost converted 50% of the third down plays. But they didn't play a pit defense. Here's Burline. Jackson, oh, what a catch by Jackson. First down at the 17. Isolated look at number six, Milt Jackson. He started as a freshman last year. Again, a big cushion there given by, given by Troy Hill, number 22, the ball well thrown. You see Bavaro picks up a block there for him, and Tommy Flynn puts a stop on him. 27-yard pickup at the 18 is where they parked it. The Irish on the move. Make it. And no place to go this time. That gritty defense in particular, 54, Troy Benson. Going to lose a couple of yards. Back to the 20. Benson for the Benson family. Remember Brad now playing for the Giants as a Penn State as a brother played in Maryland. Second down, 12. Howard's foot to the bottom. Jackson to the top. Brooks, think it in the backfield. Intended for Howard. Troy Hill, the defender, had slipped. You can see him down with the pass not on target. Burline was hurried by a free safety blitz by Tommy Flynn, again, feeling the pressure. Take a look at the pressure, the Bur Burline. There's Tommy Flynn. He's coming up all the way to the line of scrimmage. Remember, he is the free safety, but look who's there. To cause some pressure and make Joe Howard miss that reception. The ball was out in front of Howard. No chance, really, to catch that ball. Well, they're to a third down again. Earlier it was third and 10. Now it's third and 12. Quite a test for the young freshman. Her line with excellent protection. Broken up, and that was fine defense that time by Weatherspoon. Ray Weatherspoon, the senior who has played cornerback, now a safety. Another look at Milt Jackson. Actually, pretty good protection for Burline because he had plenty of time to throw this football. There's Tommy Flynn right there in the middle. He jumps on him. He's pretty well covered there by Tommy Flynn. But you see from the other side, Ray Weatherspoon, number nine. Again, Burline is really locking in on the receivers, looking at him a little too long, and it allows the offside coverage, like you saw right there, Ray Weatherspoon, to come from the entire other side of the field to knock the ball down. This will be a 37-yard field goal attempt by Mike Johnston. Kevin Smith holding. Johnston kick is on the way, and the Irish are on the scoreboard. to three. Pittsburgh has the lead. Notre Dame now fighting their way back in. 8.41 to go in the third quarter. Kicking off will be John Carney for Notre Dame. This will be Stunnett for Pittsburgh and he's not going to bring it up. At the 20, Pittsburgh will set it up. Well, looking ahead tomorrow in the National Football League, the Dallas Cowboys 8-1 against the Philadelphia Eagles. That's always been a tough struggle in the NFC East. Danny White, who came off of a five-touchdown game against the Giants, will go up against the Eagles. This plus other regional action, all starting with the NFL today. So be sure to check your local listings for NFL football. Big defensive series here for Notre Dame. They've got a new quarterback for Pittsburgh. We talked about him. They've got to get the ball back to the Notre Dame offense, which has just scored three points. Chris Jellick is that quarterback. He came in the last series of the first half. A little double the snap. McCall. Oh, they are fired up. Joe Bars is 87. This is a big series for this defense because we talked about it, momentum, offensive series. They came back in the third quarter here in Notre Dame, drove down the field, and got three points. The offense has some confidence right now. It's important for them to get the ball back in decent field position. Again, Pat, on that last play, you see the problems Jellick had with the snap. That quarterback change, we've seen it all year long. Second and eight. 
Matt Stennett, the intended receiver, defending well was Troy Wilson, number 12. It's third down. Dengens now comes in. He's the finesse pass rusher they like to bring in on a passing play. Spielmaker, likewise, comes into the secondary for Jerry Faust. Third down and eight. Pittsburgh needs something here. So does Notre Dame. Wallace and Stennett split out. Gellick gives him a call, and the call's not going to get the first down. Don't wake him for Janik. In the first half, Pittsburgh was a very unpredictable team with John Jimmy at quarterback. We talked about that. That's why they were so successful. Here in the second half, they had to go into the shell because the new quarterback, Chris Jellick, they're paying the price right now. Jellick needs some success before he can maybe mix it up like Jimmy was. And there's Howard waiting for the punt. 7.21 to go in the third quarter. Very fine kick by Recchia. Howard to the 40, the 45, to the 47 of Notre Dame. Al Desert making the stop, a 42-yard punt, a 15-yard return, and Notre Dame Stadium is coming alive. What a setting for college football. This has really been fun spending the last couple days here on the Notre Dame campus. The Golden Domers. Jackson and Howard come split out. Shiner is still in a tackle in place of Larry Williams. Now Jackson lined up on the wrong side. Burline on first down. Throws to Howard. 50, 45, and Howard to the 41. First down. Football is a game of momentum. A nice safe pass from Steve Berline to split in Joe Howard. It's a little screen pass. You can see number 74, Mike Shiner out there in front of him. You see 54, Scandal trying to help out there. A good running by Joe Howard, but a nice safe pass for Steve Berline. And a first down. 12 yard pickup to the 41. Same thing, this side of the field. Jackson doesn't go quite as far, but they are opening things up. Troy Hill made the tackle for Pittsburgh. It'll be second down, and still seven yards to go. Make it six. You can see Burline getting some confidence from that previous series. And Larry Williams came right back into the football game for Notre Dame, although he came limping back. He is playing with some pain, quite obviously. Marino checks out. Second down, six. Pinkett. That time, as small as he was, he couldn't hide from that Pittsburgh defense. Aldisert was there first. And it's a third down. There's been a lot of third downs on this third quarter for Notre Dame. Third and five. Burline will take the play. It's signaled in by Blair Keel. And I want to say something about Blair Keel. What an attitude he's had helping Burline. In fact, Burline says he's like a big brother to me. Third and five. Is Howard. He's got the first down. There's a penalty flag by Burline. Burline was hit, and that's where the penalty flag has been thrown. And Burline does not like it. He's going right after number nine, Ray Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon on the blitz. Well, you're going to see Pittsburgh blitz because Steve Burline is beginning to have some success. Here he hits Joe Howard, a critical third down. He drills the ball there into Howard for the first down. And a little out of the screen, Burline was hit late by Ray Weatherspoon, the strong safety. Boy, you saw some of that fire of Burline, didn't you? <laughs> you got to like him. He's got a lot of enthusiasm for a freshman.
watch the top of the screen, number nine, Ray Weatherspoon, is going to come in and go right to the helmet of Steve Berline. There's number nine. Oh, that's a good call. That's a bad, bad play by number nine, Ray Weatherspoon. You don't hit people in the head. Well, you see it. And sportsman like call. Not only was he late, he hit him in the head. Right with the fist. Good call by the officials. No room for that. First down now to 22. Pittsburgh leads it 14 to 3. Burline gives to Smith and he runs into all kinds of problems. And we have flags in the secondary. Jackson and Melvin Dean going after each other. Unbelievable. Melvin Dean again hit Jackson right in the head. And the officials, two officials were there to call the penalty on the Pittsburgh team. Now, here's a look. He's going to come right down number six, Milk Jackson. Now, he's just trying to put a block on, on Melvin Dean, number 28, right there. Watch 28. Go right to the head. That's two plays in a row. Good call by the officials. You want your defensive team to be aggressive, but you don't want them to play like that. The difference between playing aggressive football and dirty football, and right now, Pittsburgh is paying the price for it. Another step on. Teammates talking to him. The penalty moves it to the 11. First down. Seven penalties against Pittsburgh for 66 yards. Notre Dame, three times they've been penalized for 45. Favorite is in. Jackson is in. They're split out. Burline looking to Jackson. To the five. Dean on the tackle. Well, Milt Jackson does his playing on the football field, and you can see him catch this ball well thrown by Steve Berlin. This was the matchup between Milt Jackson and Melvin Dean, who the play previously had gotten into it. I think that's interesting. They went to Jackson right after that altercation. Him. Now they can pick up a first and goal at the one. Right now, they're at the five-yard line. It's second and four. Two tight ends. Beamer, Brian Beamer, 85, and Bavaro in for the Irish. Power eye backfield. Two fullbacks, Brooke and Smith. Make it. And he's not going to get in this time because Chris Dolman, 6'6", is the guy who slammed him back. Don't pick on number 56. Well, it's 5'9", Alan Pinkin against 6'6", six, six, Chris Dolman. Dolman is a big play performer. He's just been a little inconsistent, but he was there that time. Third and five. Weatherspoon comes out. Callahan replaces him at safety. Three ten left in the third quarter. Burline in trouble. You know, it looked like he had Smith wide open, Pat, and he went to Bavaro on that play. Chris Smith was about 10 yards from him. Bavaro was the intended receiver. But you're absolutely right. He had Chris Smith open early, but there was some pressure on Burline, which didn't allow him. You can see right there, 22, Troy Hill did not allow him to get the ball to Chris Smith, but he should not have thrown that ball in there to Bavaro. Number 82, he fights off on a couple of blocks, and he's a secondary receiver. Chris Brown was the primary receiver, but there's three or four defenders right there. That ball could have been picked off. So they're going to have to settle for the field goal. This will be a 22-yard attempt. Johnston, who earlier kicked one from 37. Johnston adds three more points. That's now six points that Pittsburgh has given up in the third quarter this entire season. Notre Dame getting closer. They trail 14 to 6. 2.55 to go. What a rivalry. Well, these statistics here certainly show how this game is swinging back the other way. And has it been interesting that Pitt really has been so good in the third quarter, yet Notre Dame has scored six points on them in the third quarter? Pitt up to this point had only given up three points the entire season in the third quarter. Carney to kickoff. Stennett is 
back deep along with Chuck Scales. Boy, Carney's really hit him well today. Stenner will not bring it out. Georgia, Florida. They haven't fought a battle. Brett Musburger is in New York, and he has his update. Gary, it is a typical Georgia performance. They let Florida march up and down the field. They kick three field goals, then the Bulldogs come back in the second half, and now they lead it 10-9, 12 minutes to go. Back to Gary and Pat. Well, Chris Jellick has not had field position, Pat, to work with. Well, he started on his own seven, his own 34, his own 20, and each time he's only had three plays, and they've had a punt. He needs something to build his confidence. 14-6, the Panthers. Jellick on the action fake. And the completion for the first down to Clint Wilson, the tight end. 15-yard completion. Well, this is what they're going to have to do with Chris Jellick. He is going to have to throw the football. You can't go into a shell, even though you're playing with your second quarterback. This is well thrown to Clint Wilson and pretty good coverage by the Irish. It goes right over the, def the defender, Tony Ferjanic, and Cl Clint Wilson is there to make the catch. But good throw by Jellick. Wilson has not really been a target all game long. Seven bowls are looking at this game at Notre Dame Stadium. The winner today continues on to a major bowl. And this rivalry between Pittsburgh and Notre Dame and McCall on a first down is thrown for a loss. Joe McCall. Rick Naylor making the stop. Gary Bender along with Pat Hayden. You see the time left in the third quarter. At halftime, Pittsburgh led it 14 to nothing. And Notre Dame has marched to two field goals. There was the first quarter. That was all the scoring we had in the first half. Conjemi with a 44-yard touchdown pass. Then Johnston has come back in the second half. 37 and 22-yard field goals. The momentum has changed. Second down, 11 for Pittsburgh. Jellick trying somehow to hit McIntyre. But Notre Dame deployed themselves very well. Dorsey put some real pressure on. And Mike Golick, number 55, was right in the, in the back's face. There was no way, no room for Chris Jellick to get this ball to him. Watch number 55, Mike Golick. He's a man who reads this screen. He sees the back coming out. He's going to stay in his face. You see that? Right there in the face of Marlon McIntyre makes the ball thrown over his head and over McIntyre's head. Good defense by Golick. Coaches tell us that Mike Golick, the difference of night and day in his play from a year ago. Third and 11. Pittsburgh is 0 for 5 in their last third down conversions. Gallup. Wide open is Wallace. First down. Matt Ballage made the stop. Bill Wallace is going to keep hurting you. You see the blitz there. They decided to come after Jellick and left man-to-man -man coverage. Guess who's defending? Number 40, Pat Ballage. He's not defending too well as Wallace has a lot of room. The ball well thrown by Jellick for a big first down that, again, is going to help Jellick's confidence. Bill Wallace has started him off so well. Now has five catches for 91 yards. That was a 19-yard completion. Two tight ends now are in for Pittsburgh. McIntyre inside the 45 of Notre Dame. Virginic making the stop for the Fighting Irish. Dingens comes in, Dorsey comes out. This third quarter has been the Irish. Jellick will send Stennett to the top of the Green split up. Gallic pressured by Dingens. Oh, what a hit on Chapani. He was, oh, was he hit by Chris Brown. The tight end, Pat Chapani, was looking as though he's going to catch a pass and watch number nine, Chris Brown. These people are hitting. They know a bowl game is on the line. Watch Chris Jellick as he rolls out. Now he's gets some instant pressure by number 92, Greg Diggins, right there. Forces him to bring the ball back down under. Then he's going to try to get the ball to his tight end, Chapani. Good defense here. The ball thrown over a couple of defenders. And there's the hit by number nine, Chris Brown. Third down and seven. Wallace split up. 
Play action by Jellick. The McIntyre, and he's going to be close. He broke the initial tackle by Rick Naylor, then Wilson got him, but he got him in time. That's the question now. It is fourth down. Fourth down, less than a yard. Double tight end set will be in this play. Johnson and Chapani. We're going to have into the, the end of the third quarter. So our score from Notre Dame Stadium. Pittsburgh, 14. Notre Dame, 6. Pitt Notre Dame is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station. We start the fourth quarter. Pittsburgh has a fourth down in inches. They lead it 14 to 6. Double tight end alignment. McCall bailing the backfield and Jellick on the sneak. And so Pittsburgh hoping that keeps it alive. Waiting for the official ruling. It is a first down. Let's take a look at the offensive line surge of Pittsburgh. He goes right over his center, Jim Sweeney. He just needed a couple inches, and he found that behind Sweeney and Durundo and Petty John. Split out goes Stennett to the top of the screen. Clark also in at a wide receiver. Jellick giving off straight ahead to McIntyre. He'll get three, maybe four on the play. You know, looking out west to that Pac-10 race, very, very close race. Could go down to the final game of the season. How would you like to line up against Bill Freilich? Again, you can see his continual domination of number 71, Eric Dorsey. Bill Freilich, there's no reason that he shouldn't be considered for the Outland Trophy. An outstanding player. We'll take a look at that Pac-10 situation in just a moment. Develop it for you. The game's out west, still underway. Second down, six. Jellick to McCall. McCall to the 20. 15, 10. He's knocked out of bounds at the 1. A 31-yard run. Just when Notre Dame thought they were back in the football game, Chris Jellick leads his team on a long drive. A little counteraction to give the ball deep to number 34, Joe McCall. Picks up a real nice block there by Tony Brown. And then there you see Chris Brown, number nine, push him out on the one-yard line. But a good changeup. They've been running power football here. They run a counter. They have a couple of guys lead him. There's number 79 one more time. He is 290 pounds. He's matched up against Pat Ballage, who is 197 pounds. First and goal at the one-yard line. Jellick to McCall, hit midair, but he struggles in. Touchdown. So McCall, now with 96 yards on the day, ties his high for the season. He had 96 against Florida State. 20 to 6, Pittsburgh. Gonna have a new field goal kicker. Snuffy Everett will come in. I should say point after man. Conjemi is coming into hold, Pat, even though he has not been playing the quarterback. Everett adds a point after. We begin to look at the touchdown by Joe McCall. You want to play a little linebacker and try to fight off some of the blocks and try then try to tackle Joe McCall. Boy, Tony Forjanic did a nice job, but again, the determination of Joe McCall to spin off it and get into the end zone. A leap over the top really met there by Tony Forjanic, but Joe McCall is not to be denied as he spins and turns and twists into the end zone from behind Fraley. It's pit 21, Notre Dame 6. They said they needed a big game from number 34, and they're getting it. Take another look at number 79, Bill Freilich, again, dominating, burying his man, allowing Joe McCall to turn and twist and spin for the touchdown. That was an 80-yard drive and 10 plays. McCall at 31 of those yards and the touchdown. Cooler here. We had, what, 55 degrees at the start of the day, now at 46. Good football weather. Crisp autumn afternoon here. By in court the kickoff 21 to 6 Pittsburgh with a lead and Greg Bell 
We had an opening for a moment, but Pittsburgh was there. Georgia, Florida, playing back in the southeast. Brent Musburger has some update on it. Let's see what happened. Gary, it is fourth and goal for the Bulldogs against Florida. They pass up an opportunity to kick a field goal. Lassiger, the quarterback on a keeper. The Gators stuff him, and they're still in it. They trail by one point now, about four minutes to go. Let's go back to Gary and Pat. Thank you, Brent. We have an injured player for Notre Dame. The line of scrimmage, the 24 is where Notre Dame will have it when we resume play. We'll try to get his number just as soon as possible for you. We want to be very careful that we have the right man. It's Hiawatha Francisco, number 33, a freshman out of Cincinnati, Moeller High School, and he's going to be all right. Now, Pat, let's take a look at the Pac-10. I started to do it earlier, and we didn't get it in. Let's do it now. Let's look what happened thus far today. At halftime, your Trojans are beating Stanford. Stanford with one win this year. They're having a rough go of it, oh, Stanford. Now, UCLA is 4-0 in the Pac-10, and they're beating Oregon in Oregon. Arizona State trailing California. Wow. Joe Capp's team's played pretty tough this year. They sure have last year as well. Now, here's what it amounts to, is UCLA is on top, but Washington, USC, Arizona State all figure in the picture. And that brings us to what we'll be doing next Saturday as you look at the second echelon. We'll be at Tucson to bring you the game between the Arizona Wildcats against UCLA. UCLA, the tough road to hoe. They got to go to Arizona. They got to meet USC. And Arizona's really played the role of the spoiler, spoiler of the past few seasons. Well, they started out as conference favorite. Now they've assumed the role of conference spoiler. Pittsburgh on that last kickoff was offside. So after all of that, the injury to Francisco, apparently he's okay. They're gonna have to do it again. Ryan Court to do that. You need a big play at a Greg Bell. Bell this time anticipating this kick at about the seven yard line area. There's Bell. Okay, you got to hand it to this Pittsburgh team. Things were not going well for him in the second half, and that last drive of 80 yards, Pat, showed some character. We're having some problems, I guess, with the stadium clock. That's what the delay is right now. As they reset it, we have one clock. Well, now they're both saying 1349. But this is an opportunity for Steve Berline. Looks like Notre Dame is probably going to get the ball in pretty good field position. We're going to find out what kind of quarterback he is. Is he the next in the line of an outstanding quarterbacks they've had here at Notre Dame, like the Joe Theismann from Montana. Joe Montana bringing his team from behind so many times here at Notre Dame and in the pros as well. Let's find out a little bit about Steve Berline. Ryan Court to kick off. Kind of a knuckleball. That's going to be tough to handle, but it goes out of bounds. They'll have another five-yard penalty. Okay, as we were telling you, UCLA, Arizona. But then following that, CBS Sports Saturday returns. Exciting show. We're going to have world figure skating champion Scott Hamilton, along with Rosalind Sumners. Outstanding athletes and will compete in the World Cup Acrobatics Championship. John Madden, my old partner, will be going around and checking up on some of the NFL players. See how they're coping with physical problems. You didn't have any of those, did you? No, none in the of NFL? those. And called? then the Remsen Stakes, the 70th running of that event for two years old, and that will be featuring Devil's Bag, the undefeated Colt. Be sure to check your local listings. Ryan Cord just keeps going back further. This time he's going to kick from the 30-yard line. They had an offside, and they kick one out of bounds, so they're at their own 30. Saw a game this year where a guy ended up finally kicking off from the five. Power coach, I wouldn't be too happy about that. Was it Southern Cal? It was Arizona State. <laughs> Here's Ryan Court. Greg Bell, this time for the five. And Bell does a fine job. He brings it out to the 40-yard line. 35-yard return. Notre Dame with excellent field position. Troy Hill with a tackle. 
There's still a lot of time for Berline. 13.42 to be exact. Jackson and Howard split to the top of the screen. Play action's got the time wide open as Howard makes the move. He's got a first down and a flag. We have a late hit again. This is Keith Tinsley, number 20. You get the feeling these two teams don't like each other. Like we said, Pitt does play aggressive football, but those kind of hits really are uncalled for. But let's take a look at the Pitt defensive secondary. Now, it's a passing situation. Notre Dame is behind in the football game. Tommy Flynn is playing deep center field. He's going to give up things in front of him, and that's exactly what Joe Howard did. Come underneath him, and there's the late hit by number 20, Keith Tinsley. A better look as we watch Joe Howard over the middle, and the late hit by number 20, Keith Tinsley, right there. Good call by the official. You know, Howard, they list him at 171. He weighs more like 160. They call him the small wonder. Penalties, 89 yards against Pittsburgh on 10. Only three against Notre Dame. And Boge likes to play aggressive defense, but not that kind of defense. Boge may have something to say about the penalty yardage after this. First down. Burline. Troy Benson almost intercepted. That pass intended for Milt Jackson. And you're right. Once again, Burline is locking in on his split end, Milt Jackson. He's coming over the middle. 54, Troy Benson plays the pass coverage well. He's had two interceptions this year. He is 6-2, and he jumps and bats that ball down, keeping it away from Jackson. Burline now 8 of 21. Burline out of the Fullerton, California area, played at Survey High School in the Anaheim area. Good high school program. Did you guys play in high school? Just a couple of times. Second down, 10. Burline scrambles out of there. He's to the 15, to the 10. The instincts of Steve Burline, you can't teach this. He feels the pressure, he steps up into the pocket. And then his natural athletic ability takes him for the run and for a big game, leading his team down to the 10-yard line. But this is an intuitive sense, a feel for the game that Steve Berline has that Jerry Faust likes so much. 19-yard pickup. First and goal. Make it. He'll make two, maybe three. Alvin Dean up there to make the tackle. Boy, those corners and safeties come up in a hurry for Pittsburgh. They'll mark it at the seven. Second and goal from there. Burline is maturing, isn't he? He played very well here in this second half. Answered a lot of questions under some very difficult circumstances. Bill Jackson comes out of the ball game. A double tight end alignment. 24 to go in the game. Burline. Intercepted by Troy Benson. Bavaro, the intended receiver, and Benson, who almost had one a moment ago, gets this one. This is the dilemma a young quarterback faces. He has a strong arm. He feels he can drill the ball in there to his tight end, but he has to learn some discretion as well. You see the concern on Jerry Faust's face, but take a look at Steve Berline. Now, he has a strong arm. He believes in it. You do not want to take aggressiveness away from your quarterback, but he, he threw the ball early right there. He had him. He throws the ball a little bit late, and that allows number 54, Troy Benson, to make the interception. That's quite an athletic move by Benson, the taped hands and all coming up with it. Three turnovers against Notre Dame. Pittsburgh has the football. Mark Bavaro, the tight end of Notre Dame, was open early on this play in the end zone. Steve Borderline throw the ball a little bit too late, but right now he is open. The ball is held and thrown late, intercepted by Troy Benson. It really reinforces what you said earlier, doesn't it? Joe McCall now as they try to wedge it out of there from the five-yard line. Close to the 10. That's inexperience, is it? It is, and like I say, it's the aggressiveness of his arm. You don't want to take that away from him, but if he had thrown the ball earlier, there might have been six points. 
But again, Troy Benson's not your average linebacker. They give the defense some credit, too. He's playing against a very good football team in this Pitt defense. This Pitt defense has played well, but, Pat, what also impresses me is Pittsburgh hasn't turned the ball over. Notre Dame three times they've lost it. McCall now has 100 yards on the day. Here he goes again. And he has a first down. Well, they get out of some real difficulty. Rick Naylor made the tackle for Notre Dame. During that last timeout, Pat, the Pittsburgh offense was huddled in the end zone, and they were just kind of challenging the crowd. Did you see them back there shaking their fists? They're coming in here at Notre Dame Stadium, and right now they've got Notre Dame on their knees. Well, these Pitt seniors, as we mentioned at the top of the show, have not beaten Notre Dame. This is a big moment for them. First down, just short of the 20-yard line. Jellick to McIntyre. And that forward wall again of Pittsburgh is doing quite a job. Mike Golick, 55, making the tackle for the Fighting Irish. Another look at 79, Bill Freilich, the left tackle. He's there right there in the top of your screen. Again, against poor Eric Dor Dorsey, number 71, clears the way for Marlon McIntyre's game. Well, the Outland Trophy's going to be announced not too far down the line, and Freilich's got to be one of those strong candidates for it. I don't know how you couldn't vote for him. I'm not sure anybody can be any better. There's a gift of Beetle Bailey. And he's across the 20, or make that the 35 to the 36-yard line. Chris Brown made the stop. Remember now, they started from the five, and they've just come right at the Irish and have a first down at the 36. There's Stephon Humphreys, you'd have to mention. Doug Dawson of Texas. Braylick. Some good ones. And flags everywhere. Let's take a look now at the Big 8 Conference. We had a big upset today, and it certainly shakes up the standings. Oklahoma, the first list. Oh, look at that. That's 72 to Oof. 29. <laughs> oh, that's. But here's the one that really upset the apple cart of the Big 8. Missouri defeating Oklahoma and Columbia. Kansas State beat Oklahoma State. And Colorado over Kansas. Now. Nebraska's all by themselves up at the top. Oklahoma losing. They have to go. Nebraska has to go to Norman on November 26. But Missouri now is very much in the title picture. First down, 15 after that last penalty assessed against Pittsburgh. Bailey. And Bailey will make it to the 35-yard line. Mike Griffin making the tackle again for Notre Dame. There's still 9.43 left in this football game. The Notre Dame defense has to come up with a big play. They have to stop them, force them to punt, force a fumble, pick a ball off. Or their special teams, Notre Dame's special teams, has to come up with a play. Texas has stepped closer to the Cotton Bowl. You saw that win, and there's an upset. Baylor beating Arkansas. Texas Tech. Now, Texas on top. Look at that. Three teams, a game off. However, Texas already beaten Arkansas and SMU. There's McCall losing a yard. Rick Naylor making the tackle. So it's third down. McCall, 110 yards. He is the first running back this year for Pittsburgh to go over 100 yards. And by the way, the first to go against Notre Dame this year. No one had gained 100 yards. Napoleon McCollum, the outstanding back for Navy, I think had 92 last week. Notre Dame has been very tough on defense, particularly against the run. Third and 11. 8.40 to go in the ball game. Kelly on a delay to Bailey, and Bailey hit by Joe Johnson at the 40, so it'll bring up fourth down. Notre Dame will get the football, trailing 21 to 6. There is a final. What a game that must have been. Georgia defeating Florida. So Georgia still unbeaten. Well, that Georgia defense has been tough. Them dogs. Well, they call them the junkyard dogs, their defense. The Recchia will kick for the Panthers, averaging just over 38 in this game. Howard back deep. No rush. They put the return on. He hits up beauty. Boy, did he hit that. And it's going to die at the five. 
beautiful kick by Rekia of 55 yards. At the five, Notre Dame will have it. They're 95 yards away, and they trail 21 to six. Notre Dame from the five-yard line. They're going to have to get something going in a hurry with 7.45 left in the game. Burline will throw from the end zone. Howard, instead, it's Troy Hill. Hill looks like a running back, doesn't he? To the 20-yard line. That's his third interception. A 25-yard return. Four turnovers against Notre Dame. Steve Berline was trying to attack Tom Flynn, the free safety. He was playing aggressively, playing up close. You see that right? Steve Flynn is hanging. Joe Howard get, gets behind him. The ball is overthrown, and Troy Hill is, is well covering Joe Howard. Picks the ball off, turns it around, actually makes a very nice run after the interception. You know, he is a cousin, or I should say a brother-in-law of Drew Pearson. He looked like Drew Pearson <laughs> catching that ball. He had a today. nice run. From the 20, mishandled snap, but Jellick somehow comes up with it. As we said, Pittsburgh hasn't turned the ball over. Close to doing it there. And Burline has had a long day. He will be their quarterback of the future. There's Troy Hill. I thought a great <laughs> You know what they say about him? He can yak it up, but he backs it up. And he's yakking it up a little he bit He sure now. is. He wants to give that ball to his football, his, his mother. I'm not sure what she's going to do with it, but... <laughs> Second and 10, there's Bailey, bouncing off. Mike Gann, 78, wrestles him down. The third down, seven for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Oh, the line of scrimmage at the 18-yard line. A game that really is going to affect who's going to be playing on New Year's Day, for that matter, a major bowl. And timeout now is being called by Pittsburgh. They'll have two remaining. 6-13 left. Pittsburgh on the move again on a third and seven. And the Panthers leading 21-6. to six. Gets a football back. It looks like this man, number five, Blair Keel, who had been the starter for four years, will come in to replace Burline, who just threw his third interception. Third down and seven. McCall. And he's going to be short of the first down. Mike Gann, first there from Lakewood, Colorado. And now <laughs> he has to decide if he goes for a field goal here, which kicker to you? He's got about three guys. He's got Snuffy Everett, he's got Vian Court, and he has another guy by the name of Joe Wall who kicked a point after earlier this year. He's not sure any of them can make it. That's the problem. Well, they look like they're not going to kick it anyway. On fourth down and still three yards to go, they're going to go for it. Joe McCall has 114 yards rushing. Notre Dame as a team has 113, and here comes McCall again. He didn't get it. So Notre Dame will take over on downs. Interesting they didn't kick the field goal. Well, they might, perhaps were afraid of a block would be turned around into a touchdown, but Blair Keel jogs onto the field. He's had some wonderful moments here at Notre Dame and some disappointing ones as well, but he has been the captain. And when he's been on the bench playing behind Burline, he's been very, very supportive, as you have mentioned earlier. And they feel that he has overcome that night he had in the Orange Bowl against Miami, that he psychologically has battled back and he's ready to play. We'll see. Some of the pressure's off. Notre Dame will take over at the 10. And to go wide is Pinkett. Weatherspoon is there. Benson is there. Aldisert is there. Notre Dame Stadium for the 53rd straight time. It's sold out, capacity crowd. The 47th meeting between Pittsburgh and Notre Dame. Pittsburgh came out, they took a 14 to nothing lead on a touchdown pass and a 10 yard run. Then Notre Dame battled back to kick two field goals only to see Pittsburgh roar back on an 80 yard drive and that's how it stands right now. 
Blair Keel on second and 14. He hits Joe Howard. And that is going to be very close to the first down. There is a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage, though. It's holding against Notre Dame. You know, at the start of this game, Pat, we labeled this as a pivotal game for Notre Dame. They felt that they could win. They could launch their football program, take the pressure off of Jerry Faust. Obviously, that hasn't happened. Well, they were on a roll. They had won five games in a row, but they had really had not beaten a quality team like Pitt. They needed to do that to get really get into consideration for a major bowl bid, and that's what these two independent schools were playing for today. So the pressure still remains. Blair Keel after the penalty on second and 18. He's on target to Howard. That will be a first down, and Blair Keel, a difficult predicament, delivers. 21 yard completion. Well, we mentioned earlier that close battle they had down in the Southeastern Conference. Look at that 10 to 9. So Auburn defeating Maryland. Auburn with only one loss. Alabama over LSU. And we'll take a look at the standings, see how they've been affected after the day in just a moment. First down for the 25. Keel broken up. That time, Wendell Linkowski, what's he doing back there? <laughs> Defensive end almost came up with that one. Look at all the people that play underneath the coverage here. Now, they're in a situation, Pittsburgh is, where they can lay back and play pass coverage. They have really eight men in pass defense. You can see some of the linebackers drop way back. There's just not much room to throw the football. It gets batted around. There's no way that Notre Dame's really going to get the ball downfield. They're going to have to drop it underneath those linebackers and hope one of their halfbacks can make a player miss. Second down, 10. Howard and Al Favorite are in at the wide receivers. Keel. Oh, a nice pass that time to Favorite. First down catch across the 40-yard line. Callahan defending on the play. 17 yards. Notre Dame in a hurry-up situation. Keel's put something on those passes. He's got a very live arm. Out of Columbus, Indiana, the hurry-up situation. They have not huddled. Keel again. This is favorite. It's a completion. Another first down at the 45. 13-yard pickup. They're not putting any pressure on Blair Keel, and he's had all day to throw the football. That's really been the reason he has completed these passes. Now, there's the standings that we wanted to show you. Georgia on top, Auburn. Now, you know what that means next week. Those two meet. It's a big one. Florida, Alabama, Tennessee. Tennessee, not a lot said about Tennessee. They're 6-2 and two overall. But that's going to be quite a, a battle before it's all over in the Southeastern Conference. First down from the 45. Over the middle, Chris Smith. Smith inside the 40-yard line. Troy Benson on the tackle. They'll be four yards short of the first down. Second down. And again, without a huddle. Blair Keel's playing very, very well. A lot of time. Hmm. Oh, there's Benson again. Troy Benson they may move him to wide receiver. Oh. Second interception. Five turnovers. This is such a difficult position for any quarterback to be in to try to be, bring his team back way behind. A lot of coverage here. People there, you see number 54 right in the middle of the screen. screen. The ball thrown right to him. He is there to make another interception. Troy Benson with two. Five turnovers. Four of them by interception. A pit defense is doing a job. After the interception, Pittsburgh now has it just across their own 25-yard line. 3.21 left in the game. McIntyre. McIntyre for five yards. McIntyre. Matt Ballage making his stop for Notre Dame. Notre Dame has to go to Penn State next week. Finish up here against Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> hey, heck with Penn State, I'd rather be in the Bahamas. Matt Ballage on the tackle. Now, you told me there's no place you'd rather be than... Notre Dame this weekend. And you're right. I had a wonderful time here. The people have been absolutely spectacular to us. 
ran around the Golden Dome today. Gene Corrigan, the athletic director, has been terrific. Roger Valdeseri and John Heisler, what a job they've done. Up the middle comes Bailey. Games are won or lost in the fourth quarter, and Notre Dame in the fourth quarter has not done very well. They've had three possessions, and all three possessions have ended in interceptions. It'll be third down and one for the Panthers. the man that we've been talking about, Bill Fraley. Bumble. And Pittsburgh alertly comes up with it. That's a couple of times in this game where it looked like they were in trouble only to come up with that. Very opportunistic. You need some lucky bounces in the game. Well, Pittsburgh still has that battle with Penn State. Look at the Air Force. They're 7-2. and two. UCLA. Now that's getting a little bit closer. Now we'll be Bringing you the Bruins against the Wildcats of Arizona. Arizona State having some problems with the Golden Bears. Recchia will kick now on fourth down and a yard to go. Penalty flag. Howard from the 25. He'll get out of bounds at the 31 yard line. We have two penalty flags. 42-yard kick that time by Recchia. He's done a very creditable job. It's illegal procedure on Pitt. Well, Pittsburgh, the only thing they have not done well in this game, penalties. They've really had a difficult time. A lot of them on the aggressive variety. Let's look at the top 10 and see what has actually transpired. Nebraska, boy, I'd say that's a lot of points. That's a 72. Close one. Texas. They're moving in on that January 2nd date. The Cotton Bowl still unbeaten. Auburn, that's the only loss they had was to Texas. Georgia, Florida. Miami, East Carolina. Illinois is playing in the Metrodome tonight. That's a night game, and of course, they got to win two of their last three to go to the Rose Bowl. SMU over Rice. mentioned the penalties they have 99 yards 12 penalties that's the only thing I think that Foge can complain about after this game there's the uh, score we wanted to uh, correct a moment ago we had Maryland winning which is not correct Auburn still with only one loss Maryland coming off of a tough game against North Carolina and turning right around against Pat Dye's team Maryland's had a very difficult schedule as Auburn has Recchia after the penalty will kick again fourth and seven he hit a very fine punt. Howard, a little change of pace there, and doesn't work. Down there quickly. Making that stop was Bill Callahan, number 31. 46-yard punt. Well, the most valuable players. We've conferred. We've taken a vote. We asked our producer, Rick Lasavito, what he thought, and then went on anyway. <laughs> and anyway, we have decided to pick two guys for Pittsburgh, Bill Fralick and Troy Benson. Freilich, the tackle. Benson, the outstanding linebacker. Alan Pinkett for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And so a check in the amount of $1,000 will be noted by Chevrolet in each college's general scholarship fund. Blair Keel, intended for Mike Favorite. Well, this is some win for Pittsburgh. They now will move into their fifth win in a row. Notre Dame's five-game winning streak will come to a grinding halt. Let's look at what Notre Dame has left. they got to go to Penn State, come back here against Air Force, a team that beat them. And, Pat, they have not finished well. Last year, they lost their last three football games. And they're going to try to avoid that next week. That will not be easy in State College. Red Keel on second and ten. Navarro. You know, Bavaro, in talking to Jerry Faust and Ron Hudson, their offensive coordinator, was going to be a big factor in this game, but he never did become that. Well, I think Tommy Flynn, the free safety from Pittsburgh, really took him away. Tommy Flynn really did play exceptional football. We expected that. Notre Dame felt they could get some big plays. Because of his aggressiveness, they did not come up with them. 13-yard catch, and that is Bavaro's first catch of the game. 
Alvin Miller, the freshman out of Kirkwood, Missouri, comes in. Joe Howard split out. Keel delivers it on target. The catch by Pinkett. He's hit immediately. That Pinkett has really been a durable player. They didn't want to run him so much, but due to the injury to Greg Bell, they've had to go to him all the time. Second down, six. Heel again, Alvin Miller. And Miller makes a fine catch for the first down at the 44-yard line. Alvin Miller, considered to be the prep player of the year, coming out of Kirkwood, Missouri. It's his second catch of the year, a 17-yarder. I talked to him yesterday. I knew him from the St. Louis area, and he said, I am the most excited about my midterm grades. <laughs> he, he did well? He did well. He was really excited about that, being a freshman, making it through the first part of this year anyway. Keel now 7 of 10 for 91 yards. And one interception. That's Bukowski giving chase. Tender receiver Miller. Now there's no flag on the play. Good pressure put on that time on Miller. 55 seconds left. You know, this really has been a game of momentum. We saw in the first half how Pittsburgh really came out and dominated the line of scrimmage. In the third quarter, Notre Dame came out and the tables turned and dominated. In the fourth quarter, again, Pittsburgh came back with some long drives with Jellick. Really took control of the football game. Well, that 80-yard drive was impressive, too. They just came right at him. Here's Blair Kia on second down, 10. Bavaro, the tight end to the 15, to the 10-yard line. Troy Hill finally able to wrestle him down. First and goal now for Notre Dame, a 34-yard pass completion. Well, Gary, as you said, Mark Pavero was supposed to be a, a big part of Notre Dame's offensive game plan. This time, Larry Keel gets good protection because they're dropping people in coverage. But Keel threads the needle in between three defenders to Pavero. Good throw. Here's Blair Keel rolling. Defended receiver was Mike Favorite. That stops the clock with 37 seconds. Jerry Faust said, though, that even though Blair Keel, if he came in today, Steve Berline was still his quarterback. He expects Berline to start next week. I thought that was interesting because you can really get yourself into a quarterback controversy in a hurry. You've been in a few of those in your sure. playing career where they got the hook ready to drag you out of there. Well, quarterback's confidence can be so fragile. What they want to do is bring this Steve Berline along slowly, and they don't want to crack that confidence that he's gaining. So they're going to start him next week and let him play. Second and goal. Blair Keel and Weatherspoon almost had it. Also Dean. Third down. Well, we showed you earlier what Notre Dame has left. Now look at Pittsburgh and see what they have remaining. Army and then, of course, that season-ending battle they have every year against Penn State, but that's in Pitt Stadium. So they have a chance, a very good chance, to finish 9-2. and two. And if Notre Dame wins their next two, of course, they're very, still very much in the bowl picture. Just because, and this is, I'm sure many people realize, just because they are Notre Dame. They're a tremendous attraction. Third and goal. Howard and Jackson split up. Look out, the blitz. He got rid of it. Brooks almost had it. Blair Keel was in real trouble there. It'll be fourth and goal. Blair Keel was under duress. They came out with an all-out blitz. Wayne Lukowski, number six. Utaya, number 40, is there to put some heat on him. Dolman from the outside and Weatherspoon, number nine. He had four people in his face, manages to get the ball off, and nearly caught by number 35, Mark Brooks. Fourth and goal. Boy, they'd like to get on the board here. Keel to Pinkett. Touchdown. This 
this is why they call them the Fighting Irish. They keep coming back. Blair Keel rolling out to his left. A difficult throw to his left. He gets his shoulders turned. And then you're going to see the de determination of Alan Pinkett as he breaks a tackle and scoots into the end zone for six. Now, Notre Dame will go for two. They'll put it on the near hash mark. Then you try the onside kick and hope for the best. 22 seconds left. The Irish have all three timeouts remaining. Here's a situation where they want to put Pinkett in motion and get the ball to him on the right side of the field as Keel rolls to his right. There goes Pinkett, as you mentioned, in motion. There they go to him, and it worked. Well, Pat, all that work you did, <laughs> talking to the offensive people, well, that one called. Gary Notre Dame hoped that two-point conversion was going to be for a win and for a major bowl bid. Here's the two-point conversion. Pinkett in motion. Again, Keel rolls to his right. Well-thrown ball to Pinkett and gets in for the two points. But again, as we mentioned, that was supposed to be for the win. Well, the onside kick will be coming up, and we'll be showing you that in a moment. But right now, there's a timeout, 21-14 Pittsburgh. 21-14, the onside kick. Carney teeing it up from the far hash mark. Pittsburgh has 10 men up for this uh, onside kick. 22 seconds left. Pittsburgh leading by seven. take a while to find out who got it. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh came up with it. The last guest for Notre Dame. And so Pittsburgh, who last defeated this Notre Dame team in 1976, that's when Tony Dorsett Rambled for 181 yards. They were national champions that year. Long time in coming, but they're going to accomplish it today. And Chris Jellick was the man who had to go the entire second half due to the injury to Jimmy. And this Pittsburgh team has come in here, and they have won impressively. Timeout now by Notre Dame. Let's go back now and recap this game for you. For those of you who joined us later in the day, the first touchdown coming up, a pass from Kajemi to Bill Wallace. Good protection. They wanted to throw the ball deep to Wallace. He picked a number 40, Pat Ballage. The ball is underthrown. Wallace adjusts for the ball, catches it, and in the end zone for six points. And then the other score coming also in the first quarter was a 10-yard run by Joe McCall. We saw finesse on the long touchdown pass. Here is raw power by this Pittsburgh team. McCall over Fralick for six. But the story of the game has been the Pittsburgh offensive line. As we watch number 79, All-American Bill Fralick, has been, as he's been dominating all day long, pushing Eric Dorsey back all the way down to the two-yard line to lead Joe McCall into the end zone for their second touchdown. There was no score in that second quarter play. That's the way it stood at halftime, 14 to nothing. Notre Dame added two field goals in the third quarter. They cut it to 14 to six, but then Pittsburgh went 80 yards. Joe McCall scoring from one yard out made it 21 to 6 then here in the waning seconds Blair Keel directed it to a touchdown on a 10 yard pass to Pinkett they went for two tried the onside kick and Pittsburgh was able to come up with it and Jelly downs it again Notre Dame asks for another timeout they have one left nine seconds left in the game Pittsburgh on their way to victory number seven Vital statistics in this game, nine seconds left. Notre Dame felt that Pittsburgh was underrated. They should be ranked in the top ten. They'll certainly be in the top 20 after this one. Jellick trying to kill the last seconds. Thrown for a loss back to the 22-yard line. And Notre Dame kills the clock again. They don't have any timeouts left. Three seconds. Notre Dame. 
I want to thank our statistician Mike Swanson, our spotter Steve Bear. I will tell you what an outstanding job we've had again in the truck. Our producer Rick Lasavita and our director Bob Fishman, our executive producer Kevin O'Malley, who's here with us and has enjoyed our stay here at Notre Dame just as much as we have. Craig Silver, our associate producer. Walter Pyle, our field technical manager. Joe Sakota, Jennifer Marshall, Victor Frank, and Sarah Fisher. Outstanding job, people. We've got a happy family here. Pat's a lot of fun, isn't it? They've been terrific. Crew has been terrific, and the theater people at Notre Dame have been wonderful. Faust, and as we said, he'd like to have won today, relieve some of the pressure, but it's right back on the shoulders of this 47-year-old Ohio boy who wanted always to coach at Notre Dame. He said something very interesting. He said, I want to have some success here because you can do so much good being a head coach at Notre Dame, and he has done that. He's really reached out outside his job. Very nice man. Jelly is running the wrong way. Look out. He might get tackled for a safety. That's unusual. It's a safety. 21-16 as Jellick runs into the end zone. Bo Fazio has picked up the win. We'll be back with a quick wrap-up after this word from your local station. Fazio's had one of the biggest wins in his two years at Pittsburgh as today they defeat Notre Dame 21-16. This play epitomizes the whole day, the blocking up front. For Joe McCall, he dives, takes it in with a great second effort as Pittsburgh now is 7-2. Notre Dame drops to 6-3. We'll be back with a final comment in a moment. The offensive line knocked him down up front. Joe McCall went to 116 yards, the first back this year to rush for 100 yards against Notre Dame. The final, 21-16 Pittsburgh. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.